<laughs> Hello and welcome to the first, the first episode of Worldwide Cast. World Rule, WG Cast. It's not yeah. really, we, we had that test one that didn't... Uh, episode zero doesn't count. Yeah, it was pretty long. We'll try not make it this long. Um, so we have some new microphones, so hopefully we sound better. We also have a new guest. Hello, Damien. Howdy. How's it going? Hello, Damien. Uh, that was yeah. weird. Uh, it, a little bit. You never yeah. attended Australian primary school. <laughs> uh, hi, Mrs. Bradford. Uh, and those two voices are uh, John and Chris again. Is, Hello. is there a Hello. reason why you refer to me as Mrs. Bradford? I no. don't know. <laughs> <know. laughs> That's a Freudian slip. Please, you prefer the Miss. Thank so, you so much. I guess we'll keep the uh, same format we had from last time because it worked too well. Um, so we'll start with Chris. Oh, no, give Damien a shot. Oh, alright, alright, new person, go. What have you been playing lately, Damien? Uh, Chris actually recommended Mark of the Ninja to me. Recommended um, the shit out of that. Yeah, which is a, a 2D platformer slash stealth map. Um, it's actually quite fun. Um, I've also been playing Crisis 3, and I picked up Portal 2 through the Xbox Live uh, Super Sale, so I got that for $20, I think. Have you been nice. playing Mark of the Ninja? Like, um, what, like, how have you been playing it? <laughs> how, how have I been? Yeah, like yeah. you can just run through and kill Xbox. everybody, or you can like sneak. Or I have been, Xbox. yeah, ki- killing all the things. Good stuff. Are you one of those people who try to like kill everyone to try and get the bonus? And no, I just kill everything I come across. Uh, okay. You get bonuses for killing everyone in the level or killing no one in the level. So I can't tell which one's more sadi- sadistic. The way you just say, "I see it, I kill yeah. it," or uh, you yeah, kill just everything kill just yeah, for the just bonus. It. <laughs> it's like you kill for the reward and he kills for the fun. I can't tell which one's more. Sadi- I don't see the sadistic. point in getting the bonus for either one of them because even without it, I'm still getting way above the th- the third reward for the level because you get kind of like a bronze, silver, or gold rating, except it's Chinese coins in this case. <laughs> Depending yeah, on that. Or three coins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and without much effort, I'm getting three coins on every level. Yeah, so. I kind of found that as well, but there's a lot of stuff to spend your money on as well, and it's not so much about like the the money that you get at the end, it's like the amount of those coins you can get through other mediums as well, because you can get like nine for each level. Yeah. And three of them are for your points. I, I haven't gotten less than eight yet. No oh, shit. Well, how far is through it, yeah? Uh, I would imagine I'm probably about two-thirds of the way through now. Good job. Good yeah. stuff. Kind of want to know about um, Crisis Three though because I really haven't seen anything. Um, what you played two, right? Yes. Yep. Played one. Yes. All right, I haven't played one, but um, <laughs> so is it like two? I kind of see it being exactly like two, but with a bow. It's way closer to two than it is to one. Yeah. Oh, than two was to one. Yeah. Like it has a lot of elements of one in it though. Like it's pretty mandatory to sneak around a lot as well. Um, particularly on uh, the, the higher difficulty levels, you die very, very quickly. Is it still like, is it open world or is it more kind of um, It's kind of like open rooms. So, so it was like Crisis 2 then? Yeah, so big rooms and you, you've got a, a choice of how you're going to approach it. For me, again, it's just kill everything that moves. So. <laughs> well, the first one was like Far Cry, wasn't it? It was like just yeah. open island. Yeah, no, yeah. Cri- Crisis kind of 1 was a lot like Far Cry uh, with... Master Chief as the main character, (laughs) right? Um, And and I found, I I started playing Crisis 1 sort of during the Christmas Steam sales, and uh, I I found that the best way to approach that was to be stealthy, and I never really switched any of my sort of uh, super strength, super jump. I always kept it on camo, and then um, you would sneak around and just kill people stealthily. Like, I wouldn't charge in and just go, hell yeah, America, right, you know, because I, I just like sneak up on them in the shadows and then go pop and pop them in the head. I hate like how that. they like streamline so much. Like, in the first one, you would like my my favorite thing was to sit up on the ro- like a ridge near the um, near the encampment yeah. and like hang them all out with your with your binoculars and find them on your map. You do that in the newer one, but like way less of it. There's too yeah. many powers though. Like the the reason I like Crisis Two so much is they just refine it because you, no, don't, no, you don't need was... to you don't need to select like superpower if you, you want to jump over a couple of boxes no, and but then th- go that's... back to stealth and then. Keep walking. But I was just about to say how I hate how they change that because, like, what I, the, I love the finesse in it. Like, you could be in super speed mode, running, and then like mid run, quickly flick to the jump one, and then do a speed jump like that. But there was like skill involved. You couldn't just like press any button and it would always activate whichever power you wanted. Were there ever any sections of the game though? Because I didn't get that very far in Crisis Neither. One. Were there the any one. sections of the game that really required you to use super speed? Because for me, I never even turned it on. Yeah. Except in the checkpoints. Except <laughs> in the tutorial. No, no. no I, just as far as being stealthy goes, though, because to run from cover to cover, I always found that I could make it quickly enough just with the normal. It was run. helpful in, in the way they intended. It was helpful that you could get away from people. But in a way they didn't intend, it was helpful for like if you crash your car, like. 
two miles away from the objective you can just cover that distance real quick yeah that was, that was cool i used yeah. to just swim across the bay instead just yeah. go oh it's right on the other side of that bay just swim right across did no. you guys play the expansion pack the warhead or whatever crisis no. warhead i have it i haven't tried it yet it's though. worth it's worth a look like just the some of the set piece stuff and that's isn't like it a new just game. isn't it just a multiplayer expansion no no it's like a, it's like a full-on new campaign you play as that oh. psycho guy oh okay psycho Psycho. <laughs> I, yeah, I played it so long ago, and I only got up to the part where it introduces like the alien kind of thing. So that's. Oh, okay. that's... I didn't even get that far. Yeah. I was sort of still running around on the island, and then my computer started to lag out because, like, right, because crisis. Yeah. Because yeah. crisis. Because yeah, crisis, and I just went now. Nah, it. Like, I got a PC that was actually capable of playing, and I felt the need to clock that, even though it wasn't <laughs> even that fun. Towards the end, I was like, I've got to do this, man. I fucking got this new PC. Because like... you built a crisis PC. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, more yeah. than that's like ninety percent of other people who bought crisis. They just like ran it and then like open benchmarks Test and their that's frame it rates, yeah that's yeah. it <laughs> I didn't play it until it was released on Xbox Live oh it was it was re-released wasn't it yeah, yeah it was yeah. I'd like to get it on Xbox Live but um it, just because it was like it was like five bucks on Steam and I went out no, I don't care bang it's cheaper yeah. than getting it on Xbox Live I, I did play it briefly on PC when it first came out yeah. and I didn't really enjoy the stealth aspect of it because nah. that's not the way I play games in 2 uh, in 2 I was more gung-ho um, which the is stealth why in 2 was shit yeah, mm-hmm. three th- three seems to encourage stealth approaches a lot more than the second one did. Um, though it looks like there are tons upon tons of weapons as well. So. Well, it, it sounds to me like they're offering you a choice now. You can either go full stealth or go full gung ho, or do a little bit of combination of both. You You'll die if you go gung ho. Oh, well. trust me on that one. <laughs> In two, if you turn the stealth mode on and then like crawl to your next bit of cover, turn it off, recharge, and then crawl to your next bit of cover, you can do the entire game without killing a single person. But it doesn't take any skill. It's just like, and it would take like seven hours yeah, more it's, than it's, yeah, it's yeah. sort of broken. It's like oh, I'm sick of I'm sick of fighting guys. I'm just going to crawl past them this time. But it's you could like, probably do that in three as well. Yeah, like I don't know if they've balanced out any more of the power usage stuff, but I felt like a lot of that was kind of like a big opportunity there from the second one was to refine those, like the amount of power that's used by doing X compared to Y, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, the bow's a bit overpowered. As I I'm saw sure. Sani using that. It looks <laughs> yeah. awesome. It, it's kind of like a giant eye win button because yeah. it doesn't drop <laughs> your uh, cloak energy down at all or anything like that. So, you know, you can get quite a few shots off and it's a one-hit kill, guaranteed. Hit them in the foot, they're dead. Huh. Awesome. Yeah. That was the thing about the second one as well because you could sneak and sneak and then if you did any kind of attack from a sneak mode, it would take all of your energy off you. So you had to come out of sneak mode and then attack and then go back into it. So it was really yeah. hard. Oh, yeah. I think I, I can't remember in, in Crisis One. I do remember. I don't think it took you out of camouflage, but it did significantly drain your energy. Yeah. Whenever you fired off a weapon. Oh it yeah, no, it took like seventy-five percent off you yeah, or something. It's a complete pain in the ass. You get like three shots off, and then bang, you're in. And but that, that's it teaches you not yeah. to do that. So it teaches you to like come out of stealth mode, attack, and then go back in again. Yeah. It's pretty. And hard. then like that half a second that you're out of stealth mode someone miraculously sees yeah, you yeah, like, oh, like a fuck. mile away then all of them just turn around <laughs> well the other problem is is when you're running it on a computer that isn't built for crisis though you come out of stealth mode kill someone and then you lag out and then you try to get back in a camera and you're already dead <laughs> see crisis 2 I played on the Xbox because yeah. even though I had a good PC that could play the first one it was like I'd much rather just have it so I knew the frame rate was going to be good I think that's really the recommendation for crisis I think unless you've got a spare 6 grand to pour into a PC just buy the console version yep. Right, because you're going to get the same game anyway, except you're not going to get you know that extra little bit of particle or something yeah, on your yeah. gun. Man, no, I mean, it's more... so well refined and it's built specifically for the system, and, and the yeah. developers choose how much of that's going to be there, so yeah. you know it's just going to be spawn. on. Yeah, well, that and, that's, and, well, and Cri- Crisis really is was built as a way to test PCs at the time. It wasn't built really as a game. It's more of a hardware test than anything. Yeah, yeah. The first one really was an interactive tech demo. Yeah, that's what it was. Remember all the videos of the barrels that came out, like the. 100,000 barrel shuffle thing where yeah, you just yeah. drop out the sky and it's like, look at the physics! <laughs> it's amazing. Didn't like PlayStation, uh, this is like a little nod to our latest segment, but didn't PlayStation do like the same thing with like blue blocks? Yeah, they yeah. Blue yes, blue. they exactly did. Exactly the same thing, but like the, there was different things going on. Like, we'll talk about it later, but yeah, the well, reason that was different is because of all the shaders that were on top of it. It wasn't just the fact that it was simulated, but it was really cool. Well, pick, pick the 3D designer here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to deflect that a little bit, a uh, little known fact is that Damien is a massive Xbox gamer. Uh, achievement horse, some would say. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> so, like, if we're talking about choosing uh, Crisis on PC versus Xbox, Xbox all the way over Yeah, the, the choice for me is pretty clear. If it has achievements linked to it, then I'm going to play it on Xbox. Quickly yeah. to go back a little bit, um, you mentioned that you were, like, finding uh, Mark as a Ninja quite easy. Yep. Um, I think that might be because you played it with a controller, because I played it over the first few levels with, a P- with the, um, just the mouse and keyboard, and then switched over and plugged my Xbox controller in, and it was just... So much easier. Like that game was made for a controller. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I can't imagine playing that with a keyboard. It is yeah, a two D platformer. It is. Stealth. Platform. But I played Meat Boy with, with the keyboard. 
Did you was, did you beat I, any yeah, level? Yeah, I, honestly, <laughs> I tried to play it with the controller afterwards, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, like, yeah. No, I, I I agree. Meat Boy is better off with the keyboard, just because you can be a bit more twitchy. Yeah, with you the can keyboard. use your little finger, your pinky for the shift, which yeah. is the sprint, and then you can just like do everything. Yeah, that's, but then you that's only have like analog yeah. left and right. You can't just like slightly nudge like your character a little bit left. You can. You just do you can. taps. You just tap it. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, the world record is on a PC using a controller. Yeah, and okay. It's, uh, it's like an hour and a half for the entire thing. Well, wow. fuck that. What, without dying? <laughs> yeah. I believe Liam did the um the do the entire game without dying. No, it's times. a whole chapter. Oh, I've chapter? done that as well. Okay. Uh, Liam yeah, also <laughs> played through the entirety of Limbo without dying more than five times. That's um, that was kind of like a a me reaction to a comment I made uh, in the past. Uh, Ryan made a comment to me saying that he thought it was impossible to finish Gears of War on Insane solo so I went ahead and did that <laughs> I told Liam that I thought it would be impossible to do the Limbo thing and he sends me a text two days later saying look at, look at my gamer profile Challenge now he <laughs> must pass it on to the next man <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he, he uh, managed to, to do something I'm pretty certain I could not Limbo isn't too hard though like if, if the first time you play through it that, fuck yeah but once you play it you know a lot of that stuff's coming the, the problem is there are some things that are just unfair in there, and you could yeah. easily use all five of your deaths on just one spot. That first <laughs> spider right at the start. <laughs> like eight times to get it right. I didn't know what was going on there. Was, what, are these, what am I supposed to do to this it's, giant It's the spider? Chris effect. <laughs> so, uh, any other games? or uh, I've sort of dabbled in um, Portal 2, Call of Juarez, um, and something else I picked up on the sales as well but I've also been playing a lot of Last Stand in Dawn of War 2 yeah. which is something that uh, John has just gotten into oh yeah he got me into it big time and I mean I mean, I, I probably shouldn't get into it now but I really should I, I, what, what you play as the Tyranid no, I, I primarily play as the Space Marine Captain. But I I've know been... what a Tyranid is. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Because I looked at your stats, because I wanted to see how many kills you had, and all I could get was the Tyranid stats. You might be looking at the Chaos Rising last stand. Um, there, uh... unsurprisingly, is an achievement linked to maxing out the level, levels on the Tyranid uh, Hive Tyrant. Um, so I'm probably about halfway to level yeah. 20 on that one. Yeah, you are, yeah. Um, no, I, I also play as a Space Marine Captain, but I'm thinking of switching to the Chaos Sorcerer. What, just what because... are you guys talking about? Yeah, I really feel like Sana <laughs> okay. from last yeah. week. Like, uh, well, 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 now you it, know how we feel when you talk for, about For Dota. the home <laughs> listeners, it's really just Dota for dumb people. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's I like it. Because um, you can almost see the entire map uh, on the full full zoom out level. Is it a yeah. Yeah. Just, Sorry? Is it a, 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 what's it called, a multiplayer online battle, battle arena? Battle arena? Uh, you would probably describe it as such, but yeah. all it really is is a circular arena with two cap points that you control to get a higher multiplier. Uh, there's three characters um, from the, the 40k universe, and hordes of things just come and attack you. In so, so it's cooperative. Or a space marine, or um, yeah, uh, you can be a, a space marine captain, a chaos sorcerer, an Eldar Farseer, and a Tyranid. I think it's Hive Tyrant. Yeah, and Retribution, which is the one I'm playing. You also have uh, Orc Mech Boy. Um, and the Tau Force Commander, and also uh, the Imperial Guard Lord General. The is it competitive or game? cooperative? Uh, cooperative. Yeah, yeah um, it's cooperative. So all three of you work together. So if you have a team, lame. <laughs> it's you can't, best... kill any, can't beat anyone. Don't want to play it. <laughs> no, you, all, you see the thing is, is though, is that some of the characters are a bit more overpowered than the others. Like the reason why I want to switch to the Chaos Sorcerer is because I was playing with a guy the other night, and he had the Chaos Sorcerer, and the way he tweaked his up is. He chose not to be narcissistic, which you can have a narcissistic chaos sorcerer, which means that the build you do for it is all about HP regen for just your character. So he chose to go down the other chaos path, and what that allows you to do is take control of enemy units and then recreate them. So the most powerful units for that wave then come under your control, and then they, they can be used for as long as they're alive. And I went, that is awesome, and they're fantastic, especially in the later waves when... The, the guys get ridiculously hard. You really do want more than three people to fight at the same time for you. But you're you. saying it's not necessarily balanced enough for it to be like a, an online like competitive game. Yeah, it's not It's not as balanced as Dota. So, um, I, I suppose I haven't gotten that far into it, though, so I wouldn't really know. It's more about making sure you stick to your very defined role. Yeah, Space that's Marine it. Captain is all about being tanky. Mm. You can get a ridiculously high HP and armor rating. Well, but that's how you play Dota well. Everyone does what they're supposed to do. And yeah. I don't yeah. do that for shit, but yeah. like, that's and then how you play it well. You get like the Tower Force Commander where you can either go area of effect or armor piercing. If you go area of effect, then pretty much the waves that are full of, say, Orc Boys or Tyranid Termagants or Hormagaunts 
Um, and the missile strike will take out entire squads of those without any issue, and also your friends if they happen to be standing underneath it. So, yep. Although I have found with the Space Marine Captain, even though you build him up really tanky, I have discovered, though, that he's, he's pretty good at sort of crowd control. Um, just for with the initial move where you do the, the melee blast where you do super melee moves and then it does a shockwave, if you can line up, like especially with Orc Boys or especially Imperial Guardsmen, um, if you can, if at the very start of the wave, you go straight to where the spawn point is and let them all spawn out, you straight, off, straight off the bat do it, you can knock out an entire squadron of them in pretty yeah, much one that hit. that loses a lot of power very quickly. That's so, what I was yeah. going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in the interest of not making another Dota 2 um, 45-minute talk, uh, John, what, how about we go to you, transition to your, what you've Okay, been so... He's been game... playing Last Stand. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't count. Last Stand. I'm not going to count that. Um, We've converted you to Dota as well, haven't we? Uh, no, you, you, haven't con- you haven't converted me. Well, you've signed up, though. You're going to play. I, I did sign up for the beta, but the only way, the only reason why I signed up is because you two would just shut up about it. And oh, I yeah. just went, i got to see what this is all about. And that's why I had to play. Cause um, him and, um, but to be fair, like I, I looked at my Steam stats. So far, I've only played six hours of Dota 2, which is only slightly less amount of time than I have of League of Legends. 116. So, yeah, I know, I saw Since, that. Uh, October or November, one of them. Yeah, I, I saw that on my Steam stats as well. I'm still level one. <laughs> yeah. It's Levels are, yeah, anyway. John. Um, <laughs> but no, as far as new games I've been playing, uh, I just recently picked up for my mobile phone Real Racing 3, which is a co-production between Fire Monkey, which is an Australian company, um, and EA Games. Um, and it's, it's got it's, EA's stamp all over it, doesn't it? Not really. You microtransactions. Need, it does have <laughs> microtransactions, but... I've found that the microtransactions, if you play it as a casual game, which all mobile games really should be played, it doesn't. You don't really need Debatable. to spend. <laughs> you don't really need to spend that much money on the game. Like the only reason why you wouldn't spend any amount of money is to buy like the really high end cars. Like uh, the most expensive car in the game, you have to buy with real money, and it costs you a hundred bucks. I kid you not. What? You got to spend eight hundred. Eight hundred of their like. I mean, there's obviously two kinds of currency. They've called. I think it's called real money or something. It's called. <laughs> It's R Creative. with a dollar. It's R Creative. with a dollar sign, and I think it means real racing money or something like that. <laughs> the, the money um, that isn't real is called yeah, real money. Yeah. And then there's one, and then there's just gold coins you can buy, and that's the ones you use real money FIFA for. FIFA has a similar now, system. Yeah, I looked at the uh, the you know exchange rate to buy. You can buy uh, like fifty coins or something for two bucks, but to buy eight, you to buy a thousand coins, which you only need eight hundred of to buy the most expensive car in the game, is ninety nine dollars. And Cliffy B wonders why we call them scumbag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like more that, on that later, actually. More on that later, though, yes. And we'll, again, we'll talk about that. But, but uh, it's, it's got to be attainable, that top level absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And it's not really that attainable unless you spend real money. Yeah. Did, How were you being serious when you said you could only buy it with real money? or Only buy I can show you right now. I've got my phone here. I mean, I mean, nobody else at home can see it, but I can show it to you right now. But it is a free app to download. So for those of you at home who are listening, feel free to download it. It is a pretty big download, though. The initial downloads are only about you know five megabytes or something. But then you've got to download an additional 1.7 gigabytes. You got right? any paycheck over there? <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you look at the game itself, you'll see why. It uh, honest to god, graphics wise, it looks a lot like. See, I'm playing it on a Samsung Galaxy S2, so my graphics card isn't quite up to spec. But I suppose if you're playing it on a you know a, a tablet PC with a better graphics card, it would almost look like uh, probably the equivalent being Forza Motorsport 3. Do mobile mm-hmm. games scale like that? Like. Um, I've heard they well, do Well, there'll be the... HD versions and there'll be just yeah, like fun yeah. versions. Um, they usually do. Yeah, well, no, you, no, no it's, just that, it's just that because my uh, phone can't process uh, the graphics in that large resolution, you don't get as many pixels. Yeah, true, true. Um, even, though, even though my phone, I mean, is pretty bloody awesome as far as resolution-wise. Like, it just every, it'll shoot in 1080p HD and shit like that. Um, S3, is that a new one? No, it's an S2. I've okay. got the Galaxy S2, which is an older version. Uh, the S on the S3 though, I hear it just looks amazing because um, it's got better. It's got a the S3 has a better processor and a better graphics card in it, um, or better GPU. Sorry, graphics card. It's, it's not a card. Yeah. Phones. Oh my god, <laughs> my computer knowledge kind of stops in 1998. Um, no, but now but, it's all applicable again. On yeah, phones. that's true. <laughs> um, but as far as gameplay goes, the, I mean, the, the standard default way to play the game, which is the way I play it, is the car automatically accelerates. Um, and it I also has that. it also has brake assist, and then all you got to do is tilt the tilt the phone oh, to steer. No. But <laughs> there are different control settings now. One of them being, and they get progressively more and more like in control. You can turn brake assist off, you can turn stability control off, you can turn traction control off. 
you can steer with your thumb, accelerate, and brake with your other thumb. Does it always um, have the continuous acceleration thing turned on? Is that no, always on? You, you can turn that off as well, as I'm saying, and you can only accelerate with your thumb if you want to. And yeah, okay. Like, like, I just play the default way, which they've made up, set up really simply, and then if you want to be more advanced, you go into the options and turn oh, it. Oh, it is set up for the casual audience. It is set up for the casual audience, and that's what brings me into why you don't really need to spend that much money on it. In order, at the end of every race, the, 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 they've made it realistic in that your car does consume oil. Uh, the suspension does need to be changed. You've got to change the tires every now and again. You've got so, to change the brakes. I don't think I know enough about this game. Is it a top down? No, it's uh, it's like a racing car game. So you can either be inside yeah, the driver's okay. uh, side of the car and you can see your, your hands and your steering wheel, or you can be outside the car, sort of like in an arcade racer type situation. And you say you can like change the so like you have the same car for like a series of races or like you can kind of um, because cars are really expensive you will probably have the one car I've got the uh, the Ford Focus um, for the because for the first race it automatically gives you 30 grand and it says buy a car for 30 grand there are only two cars you can buy the Ford Focus and the Nissan Micra. S15 Micra. or something <laughs> Rocking the um, Micra. Yeah. yeah so those are the only two cars the Ford Focus was the faster of the two just as a stock so I bought that but that didn't leave me much money for upgrades. If I'd have bought the, the Nissan, I could have bought an upgrade. How are you going to afford your spoiler, man? <laughs> your car will be slow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. So you need them flame paint jobs and decals. <laughs> well, that's, that's, and that's actually one of the things that really annoys me. As far as paint jobs go, you can only get... Uh, well, for the Ford Focus, there are only three colors you can paint it. Uh, the default is green. It's this really gaudy lime green. It t- looks awful. Uh, standard, just white or like, a, like blue, like a deep blue. Those are the three colors you can get. And on top of that, you can't buy those with in-game currency. You've got to buy that with real money. But you start off with 20 gold coins in the first place. So it costs two gold coins to paint your car. So I just went, no, screw it. I can't stand that gaudy green. Go white. I think that's why they painted it that rub- ridiculous color. More than likely. The <laughs> that, next that car is like up, the default like, yeah, focus. The next car up, though, which is a Dodge, uh, Dodge Challenger, car. like the latest model, which is an awesome drag car, is default is gray. So I went, you know, I think just... I don't know why the Ford Focus started out as a gaudy green. But um, for Australian players specifically, um, an awesome thing is, uh, aside from it having realistic tracks, so it's got tracks in Germany, in England, in Japan, all that, they actually built a custom track set in the Melbourne CBD. So uh, you just race like a square. You just have left, to stop left, every five seconds. <laughs> no, no, no. Turn. Yeah, turn. They've <laughs> actually, no, because what they've done is, is like uh, part of the, the you start off the, the the start line is out the front of the Melbourne Arts Centre. You go up to Flinders Street train station and then you do a hard left um, down Flinders Street and then in the middle of Flinders Street what they've done is is that midway towards uh, South Bank um, they've put in a chicane so you've got to go through the chicane then it's another hard left over the bridge uh, the bridge before the Melbourne Aquarium uh, so for those of you who in Melbourne you know what I'm talking about for those of you not in Melbourne pull out your Melways yeah. or your GPS <laughs> Google Maps that shit you'll know what I'm talking about is it about. recognisable like can it you is. see Flinders Station that kind you of can stuff? see Flinders Flinders Street Station see, like, very easily emos, recognisable like, <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's all closed off I think I think what I'm they did is security went through yeah. and arrested yeah. everyone um, whatever but yeah see, so, so you go see. down there you go, go across the, the street and then from there it goes into the, sort of the back streets of South Bank which I'm not familiar with uh, and then you come back up and around over over Melbourne Bridge and on and up, you know up to the art centre and that's the whole track. And it's a very short track, but it's a very windy track, very technical track. So if you've got a big hulk of a car with not very good brakes, you're going to smash yourself in 10 seconds. Can you buy Commodores? Uh, I'm not sure. I believe you can. Um, but I, I definitely know like, I definitely know you can buy supercars. You can buy the Bugatti. Uh, you can buy the Zonda. You can buy... Just uh, pump 500 I can't pronounce it. The, 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 the really super... The German supercar, Koenigs... Oh, Ko- Koenigsegg. Koenigsegg. You can buy a couple of Koenigsegg cars. That's right. The most expensive car in the game is a Koenigsegg, and that's the 800. I used to love Zonda when I was a kid. It's my yeah. favorite thing. Like, it's probably like arcade-style toy cars. It really is, yeah. They need to allow you to buy like Skyline R34s, and there's just like a chat lap um, map where you just go up there, <laughs> turn around, go right back, turn around, <laughs> go right back. <laughs> Um, but as far as a racing game goes, it, regardless of it being a mobile or not, it's just fantastic. It sounds like um, a need for speed. Yeah, it is. It's a need for speed title. But again, the thing is, is because it's realistic, any damage you get to your car, you then have to pay for at the end oh, of the race. I hate that. <laughs> but it's really cheap. It's like the most expensive piece. Of, I, I smashed the entire car once, 
and that cost me 500 bucks out of my three thousand dollars i won i saw a screenshot does it take time to like change the oil and stuff uh f- not f- for for repairing body damage it takes no time but uh, as far as yeah servicing the car goes it does take time but you can um, use coins to you can uh, use yeah. coins yeah. to speed that up but yeah, yeah. the reason why i like it as <laughs> a casual game is, yeah. is that what i do is because it is so graphically intensive it sucks your battery dry so if you're playing it in like 10 minute stints it doesn't really cost much to your battery um so by the time it requires servicing which is pretty much every 10 minutes uh or 20 minutes uh i just go yep and then stop the game because it'll it'll keep that timer going down running in the background so you can close the game quit it out and do everything else and it'll still go by the time you come back in it'll be all fully repaired <coughs> which i think is fantastic it just means that it, it, it gives me a point where i know i can then stop yeah. So you're not just draining your battery on like Dungeon Defenders second wave. <laughs> Holy crap! I used to have my I used to play that with my buddies over a LAN. Two of my mates would have tablet PCs. I'd have my mobile. And another man would would have his mobile. I had my phone ch- plugged into the wall on a charger. It was still draining the battery. It was that intensive. Dungeon Defenders. Fuck. Uh, anything else then, or is that it? Um. Uh. Well, that, uh, it's part of their social networking thing. Um. You can log in via your Facebook account. And then race your friends. I meant games, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I try to get away from games. Were, all right. Well, yeah. Well, I was playing. Yeah, real last, racing the new Dota two. Yeah, last stand, <laughs> uh, Dota two. Um, I've played a few games just against bots so far. Uh, I really like Luna and Queen of Pain. People probably will know what that is. But what really annoys me is people need to make more mods for Luna because I went and looked up on Steam Workshop mods for Luna and is there's this like going one, where I think it's going to go there's one no 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 there's one <laughs> weapon mod and that's it and I just went but dude I want some cool armor some of the characters like don't that. have anything I don't know like, and by cool you mean more revealing yeah. no no I, I <laughs> mean, I, I, mean like a big, I mean like big bulky armor right or Xena Warrior Princess you can actually get and like, then have have her mount be a horse because then I could have it like charging in Xena style going Phwah! you can actually get this really cool mount for um, I can't remember what it's called but it's like 15 bucks and yeah, I'm not paying fifteen. I'm, I'm, not, paying I'm not paying anything. fifteen bucks for a graphical asset. Oh, I'm not going to pay anything for Dota. <clears throat> I, I didn't either. Well, that's <laughs> no, well. That, see, that, that being said, uh, I, don't I think know. When it, I think when Dota does go into full release, though, I am tempted to pay for the game, but I'm not tempted to pay for. Well, it's going to be graphics. free either way. Like they already said, it's free. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sweet. Cool. So, oh well, then oh, well, then I might chuck them five bucks, but that's about it. Steam Workshop. Cool. Like. Workshop slash the store. That's awesome because I was it's, wondering how I was going to fit it into my calendar of upcoming games. Like, there's so much shit coming out soon that I just didn't know how I was going to make a it. budget for it. Oh wait, zero. Right. <laughs> so, what Plus have you been playing? Twenty-five Ryan? bucks. Well, um, I've actually I won't talk about Dota, but I've been playing um, Spider-Man Web Shattered Dimensions. Dimensions. Shattered Dimensions, Demen- yeah. Webs, yeah, Shattered Dimensions. Um, Demented Webs. Demented yeah, yeah, Webs. You're probably Demented thinking of Web's. Web of Shadows, which is another game yeah, entirely. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to you, Damien, about it, and you said you had a lot of trouble, well, not trouble, but like problems with the uh, the noir stuff, the, the stealth. Yeah, it's it's the, the controls will alternately either swap or not swap when the camera view changes. Well, sometimes oh. it'll do it halfway through it, so you'll be pressing right to crawl, ro- crawl right along a wall, and then the camera angle will change, and suddenly you'll be going up. Devil may cry. And then you'll crawl into a uh, spotlight, yeah. and all these assholes will see you, and you're like, <laughs> well, there goes my not being detected achievement. So <laughs> They're not bad guys, they're assholes. <laughs> yes, that exactly. That camera shit, man. Devil may cry had exactly the same problem, the original one. Yeah. It was, it was almost like, like endearing, because it's so old and great, but... People shouldn't be doing that in new games these days. No, not at all. Now, the problem I have with that game is the LA, like, the noir stuff. Well, uh, actually, no, it's when you kind say of the noir, same. Do you, do you mean that it has like a noir style to it? Or? Yeah, it's like black and white, and yeah. it's like it's Spider-Man a, noir. It's, it's got, a Spider-Man got, universe. Yeah, you have four different Spider-Mans. Oh, so you got S- Spider-Man, please. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> um, you actually write the first time, though. Yeah. Spider-Man's. Uh, so you have um, the amazing <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, Which is the one we all know. Yeah, noir yeah. Spider-Man. Um, black one with the, the spawn shit? No, 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 no that's, that's, that's Ultimate. That's yeah, Ultimate Spider-Man. You have Ultimate as well, and Spider-Man... Twenty ninety nine. Like, yeah, whatever. I used to watch Number. that when I was a kid. I hated Twenty Ninety Nine. That was a horrible show. I think they all were, except for, like, the really old, like, Spider-Man. No, the then, ones, then again, the, see, the I associated with the shitty important. breakfast cereal I used to eat in the morning. I had this dodgy home-brand version of Nutrigrain, which tasted like off-lemons. And that'd be what I'd eat whenever I watched the show. So I think I got that association going. <laughs> right. I probably should go back and rewatch the oh, show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The fact that it, they brought that to your mind straight away is pretty strong connection. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You're in the movies and you're just like, man, I want some cereal. <laughs> so like I was saying, 
The problem I have with that game is that there is 13, 13 missions, and each one takes around half an hour to 45 minutes, but um, it's, it's all the same characters reskinned in every... Like, the only good thing about any of this game is the last, like... No, the middle five minutes, and then the last, like, ten minutes, where you actually fight the boss that that level is um, based around. And all the rest is just, like, going, going somewhere, hitting, like, basic... Um, first tier infantry and then they might like get some heavies in there and then real formulaic then. yeah it's, it's it's a button masher it really is and there is no variation either um but is it like god of war where you press the square button to win the game pretty or do you much. have to press like every button at yeah, once? Except, except for us it's the uh the y. x button the x so. button yeah, pre- <laughs> I, 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 played, I played god of war 3 on the playstation 3 and i was pretty hungover when i did it and I said, "How do I play this game?" And everyone just said, "Press the square press button." Square. <laughs> I had a great time with God of War Three. I, I was just, I was taken aback at how good that game was because I hadn't played it the previous game. Oh, dude, I thought it was awesome when you got to rip Athena's head off. That was great. Yeah. Was it Athena? Spoiler alert, by the way, guys. Oh, there's a new <laughs> yeah, one coming out after the I've, fact. Yeah. <laughs> and then is, that even, is there story to that game? <laughs> yeah, there is. You go he's around. He's angry and he kills. Yeah, everything he, he, in he's universe. angry at Zeus because Zeus screwed him over in some way so he says I'm coming for you Zeus and he does it by going through every other god anyway getting back to Spider-Man yeah <laughs> nah Kratos man Kratos <laughs> um that's that's really all I have to say about it I haven't beat it yet because neither it's... have I I'm probably the last set of four missions away from finishing it I think so am I the, the third act no it's pretty old it's like two or three Three years old, maybe? Yeah, yeah okay. it's uh, for thirty dollars, either twenty or thirty dollars through Games on Demand, which is why I picked it up. It was is actually, that like a barometer of how old it is? And like, yeah, uh, it was yeah. actually cheaper than anywhere I could get a physical copy. So. Is Games on Demand that website? Uh, no, no, on, uh, Xbox Live yeah, Games. Oh, on yeah. okay, yeah. So which you, you can get Max Payne three for four bucks, really? ninety five today. Yep. Wow, uh, that would have expired by now because that was up at about midday I yesterday. Also, yep. this podcast won't be on for like another day or two. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> um, I'm but yeah, I said so that. that <laughs> Max Payne was great. Yeah, um, and then I guess keeping with like the hack and slash genre, but um, a bit newer. I've been playing Metal Gear Rising. Ah, uh, yes. So. I've only played one Metal Gear game before, and that's number two, and I didn't particularly like it because... Oh, fuck you, man. Uh, no. I, got, like, I got issues with like the controls. Like I, I, oh. I can see how it might have like been acceptable then, My but now breaks. I just can't do any... Like, oh, then you're going to hate me then, dude. I was a Splinter Cell kid. Uh, I'm not like that, but I fucking love Metal Gear. Oh, really? I've, I've spoken love to Metal Gear. Love yeah. it so much. I've, 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 been, I've spoken to people, and they say, oh, you know, and we did this, this, and this in Metal Gear 2, and I went, I don't know what you're talking about, and he went... You've never played Metal Gear Solid? I said, no, I, I played Splinter Cell when all those were out. And they went, oh my god, you were uh, a Splinter Cell kid. Get the fuck out. Nah, okay. I, I'm overdoing that about game stuff. But yeah. but like... Oh really? I've heard Metal Gear... League is... of Legends. I, I, yeah. For the record, his eyes twitched. Yeah. I, like, I had a mate who tried to get me to play League for a good two or three years. And then Ryan tried to get me to play Dota. But you were more convincing, so I finally did it. All I've always all persistent. Yeah, you know, they were the same game. Like. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason I picked up both and played them within about the same twenty-four hour period is because people would not leave me alone until uh, I played them, and, and I played them now and they leave me alone. Google. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was does, like that. Does. That was me in League of Legends. It just people wouldn't leave me alone about it. I went fine. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah. I'm not even kidding. My mate, at, like he went at me for like two years straight every week he was like get it download-. at one point I downloaded it but I didn't actually play it <laughs> that's how close I came it's just like, in spite. oh cock tease. yeah I don't know <laughs> now Metal Gear Rising I was just going to say the reason that like I'm really liking it and the reason is it's that same like Japanesey crazy bullshit but it's actually actually playable and fun to play so You've all seen like the tech demos of the. Um, I the, played the demo last week, actually. Yeah, slicing the watermelons and. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that. I saw that. Yeah. That oh like. Can you do that in the actual game? Can you slice yeah, watermelons? You, want. you can do it whenever you want. Nice. Or if you, like this, you have this little bar, and um, when it's full, you actually go into slow motion while doing it, oh, and nice. it shows you where to chop like a specific person, so you can grab like their spines out of their body and crush them in your hand to get a full <laughs> bar again. So Wait, do it, you can do you them. actually see the full gore in the like? Have you got the Australian yeah, yeah, version? Or? Yeah. It, it's not really gore because um, a they're cyborgs and b they're like spines glow blue. It's proper so, anime style. Yeah. So they have it. Ed- no, so they probably spines... have edited. I, I mean, is it like that in the American version? Yeah, though, no, there's it's blood not, everywhere. It's though. not okay. gory. It's like proper anime style. Yeah. Like, they're all oh, cyborgs yeah. basically, but there oh, are humans okay. in there somewhere. But like, 
the it's just spines, not in their spine. No, their spines like glow blue, and they've got like electrolytes or so. Yeah, I've got electrolytes. electrolytes. Yeah. 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 It's got electrolytes. Yeah, and uh, somehow by like slicing people with your sword, you, like your sword absorbs electrolytes and gives you gives it to your fuel cells. Is the whole thing sponsored by Gatorade? Uh, it should be. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> but that sounds to, very Japanese. Going it's back nuts. into the gore thing, like in yeah. the first ten minutes, um, you get your arm chopped off, and blood just goes everywhere on this train. You like pass out in a pool of your own blood. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. So why couldn't they do that to Left 4 Dead too? <laughs> Man, imagine they re-released it now. Well, that's oh. the thing. You know, they don't even need to because a lot of the mods. Got the, the no, a lot of mods on Steam Workshop rely on the full gore being there. So when you download them, the files come with them, so you can get full gore anyway. It's like a text file where you just like say gore. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> gore true. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> that's it. Um. So that's. Ugh. Always more Dota. Like, it's going to be a constant for, like, the rest of my life. Yeah. No, it's not, but still. It I'm will kinda, be. I'm right no, until, until Dota 3 comes I'm out. I'm just saying that because I'll probably die from playing too much Dota. So. Well, we had three games last night, and that was some fun. That's the most fun I've had playing that game, and I'm on 15 hours now. But, yeah. Just brilliant. I was ahead of you. Oh, <laughs> Wait a minute. How, many, how, how long have you been playing it for? Like, when did you, hours. No, when did you get oh, it? Oh, um, two weeks. And like you've, been playing it, you've been playing it for two weeks, and you got 15 hours. I've been playing it for two days and got six. <laughs> Who's I've played more other addicted? Games, I've been playing other games, though. Chris has a job. Ah, yes. Yeah. That's true. I've been unemployed <laughs> for the last month. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so... into the rescue. <laughs> Chris, we'll go to you now. Uh, there's a reason... Yeah, uh, I've been playing this game called Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. The sorcery is spelled SW. I don't feel like I should tell that to people because I want people to check this game out. No, it's no, got... it's important for when people Google it because otherwise it'll say, did you mean it? And we're like, no, I didn't no, fucking mean that. I mean, it sounds like such a generic title as well, Sword and Sorcery, whatever. It's, it's proper inspired by Zelda stylistically, but it doesn't play anything like it. It's a 2D game, but there's a kind of a depth to it and it's all pixel art. It's, I think... It's the in thing at the time. Uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> it came out a couple of years ago now. It's, um, but I got it as part of a whole... Oh, so now you're saying they did it before it was cool. Yeah, no, I did. I, I, I was way before it was cool. Yeah, cool. I liked it, and then I decided I didn't because it got popular. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm just doing it because it'd be trendy. Right. It has a pretty bitchin' <laughs> soundtrack, too. It's fantastic. The, the game is actually called Sword and Sorcery EP. Like, the entire game is basically a delivery platform for this um, music that this guy called Jim Guthrie has done. And, you, and when you get the game, you get the entire album along with it as well. Ah, oh, cool. And um, you actually Did he be, work in the development of the game? Um, quite. The whole game is centered around the music itself. Right. Uh, okay. not, not like, it's not the core mechanic, but all of the secondary mechanics are based around the music and interacting with so it. So, would you say that the game is like an interactive music video? Not... Yeah, in a way, I guess, but it's like six hours long, so probably not. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's an interactive... Yeah, it's an interactive uh, yeah, music video for an audio file. The game has a really interesting little story. Like, it's a proper indie game, so there's no, like, sweeping backstory or anything like that. You just sort of wake up in this weird little world, and there's probably, like... But under 25 like screens that you can travel across and you kind of go back through them all and go to these f- few limited locations so you're like going somewhere collecting an item that lets you go somewhere else yeah like yeah, what, do you, what do you actually do like, I have no idea what like, you do neither do I and I finished it alright it's cool. great like, it's, <laughs> good alright next game honestly to me like it's it feels like the game is just there to just deliver this music but there is a story to it as well it's really aware of itself and there's all these cool little things like at one point you get this thing called the Megatome which is like this book that you have on you at all times and if you open it up, you can look at what every character that you've met in the game is currently thinking, including yourself. And there's all these weird little jokes. Like, right. the first two things that you read, it's like, I am re- I'm opening the Megatome, I'm doing this. And then it starts saying, we. And it's like, why, why am I writing this in the second person? And then it's like, what it would think that you're thinking when you're reading it is being written out there. And it's just really weird. Like that. And it's all linked in with Twitter as well, so you can tweet any of the things, any of the sections of dialogue at any given time. Problem is that that functionality was broken by the time I started playing it, so I didn't do any of that. Would you have even used it if it was working? Some of the stuff is that funny and that like charming that I would have just done that. Like, it's really funny. Like, I just can't get people to play this game enough, and I can't explain what it's like enough either. So but, you played on PC then? Yeah, although I kind of wish I had an iPad just to play it, because it was it was made for iPad. Like the the way you move around the world is that you either double tap wherever you want to walk your guy to, or click and hold, and then he'll walk towards that, and you can move your cursor around until follow your cursor around. I must say that the music is pretty good. I almost bought a Vita because, um, you know, sound shapes? Yeah. Yep. There's a whole section of that game devoted to Sword and Sorcery. Really? Yeah, and it's, like, got these, all these cool, like, mechanics, and you can jump on, like, uh, I don't know, you ha- you have to see it. Yeah, it's the, the, the audio music games are so much like that, they're so hard to describe. Like, I've actually been looking for games that are more musically oriented now. Like, 
I couldn't be fucked playing that Guitar Hero Eden game. No, man, no. <laughs> Guitar Hero is gone. It's dead. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants that anymore. But, but yeah, I can't encourage you guys enough. Like, what, what did you think of the music, David? Uh, it's, it's almost trance-like. Uh, what I heard you playing in the office, which yeah. you know, ticks all the boxes for me. Um, it was really takes you back to the glory days. A little, a little bit more <laughs> relaxed than you would normally describe trance as. Almost even. It's, it's, no, that's no. no like just to say you're interested bit. in trance is interesting because every time you've put on music in the office, it's always been metal. I don't listen to metal. That's right. Oh. I, I'm, oh. I'm I'm the punk kid. Yeah. Oh, punk. That's right. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's got electric guitars and drums. Okay? I should just <laughs> say that um, Damien uh, frequently has a sparked up mohawk. Um, and wears leather, leather studded clothing. Yeah, the spikes coming out of his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Absolutely, yeah. They're, they're surgically attached. If you hear like little tinks, it's like his spikes hitting the microphone <laughs> or something. But um, anyway, why don't we take a short break and just play some of this music so you guys can hear it? All right, let's do it. Absolutely, we'll, we'll all discuss it afterwards. Sweet. Yep. Right. See you on the other side. Um, that that was music. Um, good music is good. Yeah, I actually do like it though because I'm kind of into that kind you of. You love your 16-bit shit, don't you? Yeah, oh, it's like yeah, just kind of ambient lo-fi electronic stuff. Yeah, I, like I love listening to it again when I'm playing Dota. Like, yeah. I, like I like to listen to that. Like that's some of the only music that I listen to in the car. Like I only ever listen to other podcasts and just new shows and stuff in the car now. Like, but that stuff I'll just listen to as yeah. I'm doing something else. You play music while we play games? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, love it. Don't, don't. I love doing that while playing Sim City. Queen like, of the Stone yeah, Age. Right. The like... music in Sim City is just so bad. Mm. <laughs> I, I like not in the the one we were talking about. Oh, not the one. With, no, no. I'm talking about Sim City four, three, and two thousand. Or three thousand and two thousand. Like um, things where you actually need to pay attention to yeah. what's happening and stuff. Yeah, but that's, that uh, helps yeah. me. Constantly. Like if you play trance music with a game like Dota, it like makes you a better player. And that's <laughs> the thing, though. Yeah, with, with a game like it. with a game like Dota, though, do you really need the sound from the game? No, it does help a lot, actually. Like, really? Because oh, 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 I, I your found tower, it, that's why you're so bad. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but games like FIFA, that kind of thing. There's a commentator on it, but you don't really. You don't need the commentator. The commentator doesn't tell you something you don't already know. He just says he and it's a goal. It's like yeah, I kicked it. There's like uh, ten lines that he says, and they just recycle the shit. Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> so but um, I, I especially like because my sister was a huge fan of The Sims, right? And um, so she had me install uh, The Sims Three onto her laptop when she got it. And uh, when she did that, she asked me to go into the sound settings and turn all the sounds completely off. Everything. Special effects, music, voices, everything. Because what she'd do is she'd then cool. fire up iTunes and put on her iPod yeah. players and play The Sims. I used to do the same thing with Sims. I do it with games after I played them for a while. I'm up to like 300 or so hours in Civ Five now, yeah. and I don't need to hear that anymore. I've heard everything you can hear on that game. Yeah. I, know what I found it's actually really good for game, big games like Far Cry 2. Uh, especially when you're going from one location yeah. in Far Cry 2 to another and you're driving, the ra- there's no radio. So what I used to do is go to the Xbox, the in-game music player on the Xbox, and then fire oh, up a bunch of music. I don't use that enough. I love that feature. It used to blow my mind that you could The do only that, game like... I ever used it with is Far Cry 2. Other than that, I just never used it. Yeah, I usually uh, put soundtracks on for first-person shooters when I'm playing multiplayer. Yeah, because you, know, you don't need... Bit, bit of Clash well, or the Ramones yeah. or something That's while cool. I'm killing bitches. I found that Queens of the Stone Age is the best, like, action-y game music <laughs> that you can listen to. It goes so well. Yeah. I, I don't, see, I don't that's why. funny, because I, I, don't, I don't put music on for um, first-person shooters, because I find that the sound is actually rather important to hear where gunshots are coming from, where explosions are, so that you don't run into a grenade, or you don't run around a corner, and you should have heard their footsteps, and then you get, like, a knife in the yeah, face. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of what people term sound whoring. Oh, um, okay. I prefer just to play the game. Yeah, <laughs> but like that's the sound design is a definite element of the game. Like that, you you could, you could also say that they're just playing the game better than someone who wasn't doing that. I don't do it, but no, like, no, I'm I'm not saying sound whoring is a negative thing. That's just not the way I play. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's just it's a negative sounding term because yeah. that's what a, a lot of people feel that any time you take advantage of a facet of the game that gives you an advantage over someone else, 
they think you're a cheating what, bastard. What, you mean like playing or, the game? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Putting more in front of something doesn't actually help either. So. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, alright, like, so let's go on to the news. Alright, so... We'll the news! Do, 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 do. Episode... <laughs> epi- <laughs> the news! Yeah. In episode zero, we actually had a few predictions of what we thought um, were going to happen in the uh, Sony PlayStation meeting. Does anyone uh, play- remember uh, the future of, of the PlayStation, it was called. It was called no. It was no, called it was PlayStation, the meeting. PlayStation meeting. Oh, PlayStation meeting. They build it as the future of PlayStation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what you just you called it. But yeah, um, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's written down here. <laughs> I can't remember any of the things we said last week. Yeah, I thought we read all these or, predictions. But yeah. We'll go back and check. Oh, it was like two weeks ago. But um, so how about we we we'll run through um what was actually shown about the console. First, first. of all, first of all, before we get on serious, what do you guys think? Like, what are your impressions? I'm fucking stoked about are, this. Are you sure you want to go there? Yeah, I, I know you. I know how you feel about it, but I'm so excited about it. The, when they said PlayStation Four, and they just said it, and the, the logo was up there, and that was the first time anyone from Sony had said it out loud in the public, I was just like, "Fuck yeah, I'm ready for it." But we knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah, that's but it true. might not have been. It, it just it was just good to it was healthy to hear it and to not have to say to be able to say it and know that it is a real thing and. I don't know, I thought it was great. You're a little it. bit more affected by hype than I am, though. So. I, I love it. I like to be excited about shit. It's great. I built myself up for it. Like, since yeah, but that's the, because, yeah, but the thing is, age. you've seen a bit more hype than he has. So by the time is, he gets to your age, joke? when that event... Mm. Yes. You, you went there? <laughs> I went uh, there. Th- thank you were so you, much, John. Were you um, involved... Like, did, did you follow the build-up to like 360 and PS3? No, not at all. Um, I didn't buy the 360 until Ryan's friend Jordan um, pestered me incessantly because at that time he was a member of the street team and he got some pretty cool stuff uh, every time he convinced one of his mates to buy an Xbox. And I think it was 2000. And uh, I'm not sure of the year, but it's probably two two Seven years after it came out or I think something that's about like that. Where I got yeah. well, I'd like to thank Kevin Rudd for my Xbox. Kevin uh, Rudd, yeah, the I, baby bonus. Yeah, the ba- no, no, not the baby <laughs> bonus. I got it from the uh, from the stimulus package. Yeah. Um, so I call I call my Xbox the Rudd box. Uh, I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I was a uh, Wii gamer box. up until on your I got the Xbox. So, um, but I had bought the PlayStation and PlayStation Two when they were first released, as in the release day. Yeah, it's um, pretty common I did that for the story, PlayStation like, to too. go from PS2 to 360. Like yeah, a lot of people yeah. did that. Well, as as I said, I went PS2, we, and then. Well, we all did that. Yeah. Well, we don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that. Didn't you really? I'm pure. Well, well done. <laughs> By I, the I way, got swept up in that shit so bad. I was like convincing people about how amazing the Wii was going to be and how it was going to change everything. And, uh, <laughs> you then were it that came guy. Out, you were that guy. I was, yeah. and then it came out and I got it and I was like, "This looks shit." If, what if is you this? if you if you're noticing a certain pattern here. He's kind of doing that with the PlayStation 4 as yeah. well. I'm not, yeah. I'm not telling, no, see, the thing is, I'm, I'm not telling people to go and buy it. I'm just saying I'm so yeah. excited about just the new generation in general. Not so much P- PS4, yeah. but just the fact that it's like happening this year. I will well, say that it left me a lot more up yeah. on, 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 on the PlayStation brand afterwards, mm. uh, which I thought it wouldn't. But See, it didn't yeah, leave me that up because I'd, I'd been up for 24 hours prior to that point. So I was just saying, fucking end already. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> How long yeah, was for, it? Two and a half hours. It's two and a half hours. Yeah. 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 yeah, they showed games. They showed. They did everything except show the box itself. Mm. Like, which is a bit. I, mean, of a I, I, I probably sound no, like I, really I hate Sony, but I just and you guys but know I this. Sony. I don't really <laughs> get excited about stuff. It's kind of cool that there's a new console coming out, but we knew it was happening. Uh, we knew it was going to be better than what's out at the moment. And quite frankly, the new features they're installing are not really new features. They're they're borrowed or outright yeah. taken yeah. from their competitors. Sure. So, or it's stuff that they talked up at the PlayStation 3 reveal that they're just using again, you know, this this teraflops thing. No one uses that term. Yes, yeah. it exists. It's a stupid sounding measurement. Wait, what? But really the only people that um, that go on, on about it you? are Sony because I, I'm reasonably sure they also talked about the amount of teraflops that the PlayStation 3 had. What is a teraflop? Guys, yeah, okay, no, okay. About so it. Uh, yeah, I did right. a bit of research on this. So uh, the PlayStation 4... Uh, has 1.84 teraflops. Uh, now, a teraflop is a uh, it's, it's a tera. unit of computing speed equal to one million million floating point operations per second. Now, floating point operation is just basically how fast uh, the computer can do one plus one, essentially. Um, so it can do one million million. So we're floating, talking a, a billion. A billion, essentially, yeah, but. No. Scientists don't... No, it's, it's one... It's a, one million million. One million... A million million. A million millions. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, a billion is... Uh, one is... Uh, 
Well, shit, that's 100 million. A thousand million. It's depending on where million. you're from. Yeah, a thousand millions, right? So this is a million million, so it's even more than a billion. So a hundred thousand billion. Pretty much, yeah. Um, a hundred, yeah, but quadrillion. You can, but it's easier to yes, say, it's that. easier to say one million million than a hundred thousand billion. But is it yeah. easier saying teraflops? Yeah. Uh, I think I think teraflops is just more fun to say. It was <laughs> an actual thing before, like it was. No, it was. It, yeah. it, it was. It was. It was a computational unit now. before that. But um, what that means is though is that the reason why it is sort of an interesting thing to bring up those one point eight four teraflops. That's uh, that's one point eight four million million floating point operations per second. Uh, and what that gives you is a pretty incredible amount of power. Um, it's going to be a fast calculator. It is going to be a really fast calculator. Absolutely. All um, right, so we got a list yep. of the specs that um, came out with. Um, we do. I'm not sure how technolo- uh, technology... Li- 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 like, we don't want to get bogged down and just saying like what kind of RAM it is. And all that kind no, of but it's I just want to... Good, like, like the, the main point of this whole thing, like the whole hubbub about the whole thing was um, that... Uh, the system itself is going to be uh, running on a architecture closer to PC or yes. x86. Yep. Which in turn will make it easier for de- uh, developers to not only um, develop for the platform, but also they could they port. will be able to port it easier yep. to. That was a big consoles. problem with this generation is that yeah. you know, the cell processor system for PS3. Yeah, the PlayStation Three was a bitch to code Look at for. Skyrim. Like well, see, the thing that's is, the it, whole reason. To yeah. Well, it. that's it. But the other thing was is that the reason why you saw a lot more games being made either exclusively for the PlayStation 4, I mean PlayStation 3, um, and if it was ported, it was a shitty port, was because you would have you had to develop your whole development team around the PlayStation 3 Completely because it was so hard to code. That's it, yeah. So even though the PlayStation 3 had a lot more sort of story-driven games, it had a lot more graphically intense games, you never saw those games appear anywhere else, though. But on, on the um, complete other end of the spectrum now with PS4 is that um, yeah. some developers have been talking about it and they've been saying that they were asked why they were developing for PS4 and not the new Xbox. And their answer was like pretty simple. It was that they have had PS4 dev, dev kits for a long time and they've yeah. not even been contacted by Xbox yet. So that they've been pretty good about helping out the developers and really encouraging yeah. them to... And that's what they were pushing in the press conference as well. They had a whole like half an hour segment on just developers talking about how cool it was and all that kind of shit. What do you think that means, though? Do you, is it that Microsoft isn't very far in the design pro, uh, no, process? No, I, I think Microsoft are overconfident. Yeah. Maybe I think, rightly. Yeah. I think Sony's realised that they're kind of fighting a very much losing battle at the moment. Microsoft has a much higher adoption rate, although I think it depends what PlayStation you sales are outstripping Xbox pretty much everywhere now. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, no, like in America, it's Xbox. Australia, it's Xbox. Um... Europe, most of Europe, it's PlayStation, and Japan is PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japanese don't want to know anything about the Xbox. Yeah, it's really. really, just zero. <laughs> well, no, and, and, but that's <laughs> because like that's because all the, all the advertising surrounding the Xbox was a very, very Western advertising yeah. campaign. There was nothing in there for the Asian market and the European. Well, market. having the Tales Japanese games company. on Xbox yeah. was a pretty big coup. Um, yeah. Tales of Vesperia um, made a lot of interest in Japan as well because. They go nuts for the uh, the JRPGs, particularly the Tales. Well, they just series. call them RPGs over there. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the American RPGs or ARPGs. Yeah, they call them like RPGs. Called? Yeah, um, but I, I can't help well, feel no, like look, really. looking at the the hardware that goes into the PlayStation. It seems a little bit antiquated. Um, what? However, as I was saying to John earlier, uh, the stuff is very highly leveraged. So you know, we're probably going to see some pretty powerful stuff out of it. But I remember reading somewhere, I think, that the processing speed is only 1.8 gigahertz or something like that. Um, granted, it's multiple cores. Um, but DDR5 that seems... RAM. That's some good shit. <laughs> yeah, it's and eight, good. and 8 gigabytes of it. Yeah, that's going to be good for a few years um, at least. And look, look, if you compare it to like what's in 360 now, it's a joke. Like, that's just... Like eight, nine I, years I don't think it's fair to compare the PlayStation 4 to the Xbox 360. Oh, sorry, the 360 and PS3, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, how far they've managed to push that and how good it looks now. Yeah, And the that's difference true. in games from the start of that cycle to now is going to be just... They're going to do a lot with this. Oh, absolutely. But, I, I think the big push for the PlayStation 4 wasn't graphics and gameplay because they've got that pretty well down pat. I think the big focus was on the social aspect of gaming, which is generally yeah. something that that has been only until recently been really not really looked upon. Well, well yeah, um, it has. It's just really bad. It's like, hey, yeah. post this to Facebook. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't really looked at. It was sort of just like, here's a like button. Yeah. Tweet this. Right. It's like uh, Uncharted with uh, Uncharted Three, where everything you did was tweeted. It's sort of like you know, uh, you know, at so and so has picked up a gun. At so and so has died. Connect at so and so has photos. respawned. 
right? You had to turn that off because I remember I had a mate of mine who bought it and uh, he was putting out sort of like something like 20 tweets a day <laughs> just on Uncharted, <laughs> right? And then the rest of his tweets, which weren't that many, it was probably another 10 tweets. Were Social video games, normal stuff. That's why you <laughs> never like insert like your Facebook login details in in an actual game. like. Uh, or if you do, you turn, the, you turn all the privacy settings so that it only transmits to you. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I usually do because I don't mind logging in with Facebook. So but want that stuff happen. They're trying to like sell it to us so that we want that shit happening. Well, this yeah. will be actually a, the share button will actually help you like do stuff that people actually want to see. So you get this really cool glitch or something. You press share button, and show it to everyone. Yeah. So for those of you who though, it's for those of you who don't know what the share button is though. Uh, the new um, PlayStation Four controller, which surprisingly is called Dual, is it DualShock Four? I, th- I think it uh, might be. <laughs> we were told it's it's a DualShock controller, which we were told they were dropping the DualShock name. Well, the, no, they weren't dropping the DualShock name. They were dropping the, the just exact same form factor that they've had since PS One. Like, they, which looking at the controller, they really haven't. All they've done is get rid of the start and select buttons and put a touchpad there. They've done a no, few, they've done a lot of stuff. It's quite a bit random. Like the, the handles are a bit like Short-term. I hate to say it, but like more Xboxy because they're a bit. Um, Bit more round and stubby. Stubbier, yeah, and the um, the control sticks as well. They're no longer convex. They're now like they go inward, so you can grip onto them better. Concave. Um, I, I didn't want to just say <laughs> do. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that professional gamers swear by the convex uh, things for aiming because it gives you more precision. Mm. Um, That's true. I personally hate them. I can't yeah. stand the fact that my I'm always repositioning my thumb after every thirty seconds of gameplay. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. Also, they've um, they've incri- they've worked on the triggers so that your know, fingers don't slip off them. They're yep. not quite curved back like Xboxes are, but they are so close They're to it. So <laughs> close, it's just, it, it is. It is a micron of an inch away from us. On from that same vein as well, they've they've released the patent pending. They were very <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> like, they were so quiet about it, like they just slipped it in there. But they've got this, um, basically, a connect that they're releasing with it. So a three D camera. Yeah, it will. It, it's pretty much the um, the it's eye an toy and the move in just like. Yeah. Basically, a connect. Yeah. But they, they were really sly about it. They were like, "Oh yeah, and we've got this camera that you've probably never seen before, and there's other stuff." Yeah, like, like yeah. yeah. But so it, that's that's the issue I have though. Like they seem to be borrowing an awful lot. But from everyone does that. Yeah, yeah. Xbox will do that too. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they will too. But you know, they're they're talking about the share stuff as if it's a new thing on live, which we don't get here in Australia. Have this thing no called breaklets where you basically just dump your last twenty seconds of gameplay into your thing for people to look at. You know, PlayStation saying, well, Sony, I should say, are like, hey, we've got this cool new feature that we don't think anyone's done before. Bullshit, you don't think anyone has done it before. <laughs> they're they're you know very careful about it wording that shit. It's yeah. like <laughs> something that you can't get anywhere in the world because OnLive is like, although, like yeah. dead now. I gotta, dead now. Although <laughs> i got to say, though, the fact that, that they've now integrated the video sharing into not just software but the hardware as well is actually quite interesting because another, another feature that the uh, PlayStation 4 does have hardware-wise is what's called always-on video compression and decompression systems. Reading it so, off the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so, what that, so what that means is, is that uh, you've got the CPU and the GPU, which actually share the same die as well, which is why uh, the graphics and processing will be a lot faster because they're so closely interconnected. And then separate from that is a separate chip, which so, its yeah. sole purpose is to record footage... Uh, compress it for upload and decompress it when well, it's and downloaded. And uploads and downloads in the background. So you, does you, that in the background, and yeah. it doesn't affect the computational power of the PlayStation 4. However, what they failed to mention, though, is that it will affect the bandwidth of your internet. Yes. So if you've got a crappy That's, internet connection and you're uploading a video, it's going to severely give you trouble for, when you're playing um, COD. Like streaming stuff to your Vita to play on it, wouldn't it? That's a big question <laughs> as well, because they've said all this stuff about how they're going to allow you to stream games to your Vita and do all this crazy, like, download, play a game as it's being downloaded, but... It all hinges upon having a high internet speed, which yeah. not a lot of people do. Like, MBN, man. Well, no, see, MBN. that's not, no, that's <laughs> not true. Country, it's not a lot of people do in this country, but the oh, big, America, their big market don't. in Japan, they do. In Japan, they in might, Japan, yeah. they have a huge one. In South Korea, they get 100 megabit per uh, second internet connection. But I would be surprised if more than half of the people that currently own a next, a current gen console had high speed internet like, in South Korea one. they would in yeah, South, yeah but, well, you can't make it's such a, a small country, in one country. <laughs> no 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 no, no. But you can make one console for a market and the Southeast Asian market no, but they're, they're is huge we're talking about Australia though and yeah, I think okay. this always on and thing is yeah. a really good way to screw a lot of Australians who have really basic internet Rural accounts yeah. they're, they're not going to be able to play online games while any of this stuff's happening yep I would hope that the always on feature would be always on with the option to turn, turn it off, it off. Yeah, for those, I agree. those of us you know who a and not interested at all in sharing gaming moments with friends such as myself, or B people who just don't have the internet connections that can handle it. 
Or if you just want to play offline. Like, if you just have no interest in the internet at all and you just don't connect it to the I internet. Th- that's got options got to be there. Like, there's no way they couldn't. Like, they, they, you've got to make people go online. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, didn't I, see, they seem pretty enthused about it, though. Yeah. So. yeah. But that's, that's what I was saying before. Like, all these features that they're selling and that they're, like, their main selling points, all this, all this Gaikai streaming stuff, like, that hinges so heavily upon having a good connection that, like, they're banking quite heavily on its, its rollout of the internet. Yeah. Worldwide. Like, yes. Yeah pretty like precarious. I think, I think more, more what they're thinking of is the majority of their their buyers are going to have decent internet whereas the countries such as Australia that don't have a standardised thing kind of get forgotten which is you know something that happens to us fairly often well, so no, we're, we're be in a pretty good position internet wise better than America soon like I've, the, I've got I've got fiber optic NBN stuff in, in my old place and it was fantastic yeah what do you have now though <laughs> still good like I downloaded um <laughs> Oh, what was it? About a mega, mega second, which is enough. Like, it's good. It's not yeah, bad. I get I get about two megabits, but I should be getting 20. Yeah. Um, but I think that comes down to the router I've got. I get 20. Um, <laughs> however, however, what they are saying is, is get that... Get 20, get bitches. Yeah, yeah. As far as um, like NBN stuff goes, though, it probably will happen during the life cycle of the uh, the PlayStation 4 in urban areas, which is which is where the uh, PlayStation is probably going to sell the most. Did you hear the um, thing where everyone's like, "Yo, this is going to be the last console cycle"? That's uh, the last prediction. console cycle. Yeah, yeah that's the what... idea being that there'll be some kind of like central platform, or it, it won't be viable in ten. There'll years be time. some kind of like personal computing device where. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if but you will. the yeah. problem with that is is that nobody asks the question who's going to be selling that personal computing Apple. device, right? Google. No, no, yeah, ex- like, Apple, there you go. You've already mentioned two companies who what? have nothing to do with each other, so Sky they're probably going to bring out their own personal computing devices. Yeah, yeah. which means you're still going to have competing units, which then defeats the purpose but of like saying this is the of, last console. The cycle. end of a traditional sort of like we're going to release these two gaming consoles at the same time. It'll be like yeah. a, it'll just be a thing that does everything, like a phone that. It's so like interesting it. to note that we've already, you know, kind of discounted the Wii U completely from this gen. This I think generation. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's two two consoles thing. next yeah. ten years. Well, that being said, see, the thing is, even even in the last generation, the Wii was sort of in its own went, went its own direction. It was it was the Xbox and the PlayStation Three, right? And those two were competing against each other, and the Wii just went, "Nah, fuck it, I'll do my own thing." And it worked right? for them. And it worked, and it worked really well. And they and they're banking on that for the Wii U. They're saying for the Wii U. We're a family unit. We're all about kids and family and old people. No, the Alzheimer's. problem is they lose all that when when a, an old mum picks up like a con- controller and it's got two sticks and it's got face buttons and a touchpad. She's like, I don't want to touch that. It's just too many buttons for me. That's it, and, and that's why and that's why Xbox brought out the Kinect because they went, well, we can really fuck up Nintendo by saying you don't even need to learn how to use a controller. Just wave your arms about like a crazy person. Stand um, on this um <laughs> weight device. Or and I got to say that I like I I, I got the Kinect when it first came out and I gave it and I. I got um the game that comes with the connect adventures i put that on and i said to my dad here you go play the game i'm not going to tell you how to play it you're going to figure it out on your own and it took me about 10 minutes to figure it out how to play and usually my dad goes after three minutes goes nah fuck it i'm going to read a book how old is your dad uh he is 55 okay so he is in the market of the elderly gamer yeah right and what i said is like after 10 minutes he figured out how to play it and he was on it for a good solid half an hour and he would have gone longer but he got tired like, he had to sit down and just go, holy shit, I need yeah. a drink. I'm not sure I like this idea of um, console manufacturers tricking me into exercising. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a bit dodgy, but, uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that I would say that it, it is so accessible it to is, everyone. Yeah. Yep. And so and, and and still fun at the same time. It's sort of like, you can make something accessible, it doesn't mean you want to do it. When it works, though. So. Yeah, or, and with Connect Adventures, which is pretty much all I play on it, besides Fighters Uncaged, which I only ever play... I want to beat the crap out of something, which isn't as satisfying because I don't feel like the the, the meat in my knuckles. I think you should video um, yourself doing that and put it up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> what the meat? <laughs> it probably takes. Why you do it anyway? So you can upload it. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't though because I I was playing it in the middle of summer and my air conditioner broke, so I was just in my undies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that. I actually want to get connected for that reason, just to set up a photo like that, like holding like a bucket of chicken, like playing <laughs> adventures or whatever. Well, there was a guy. I remember there was a guy who freaked out and he contacted Microsoft because he said, "Dude." I know it takes photos, but how do I stop it from taking photos? And the woman said, why? Oh, because I was naked while I was playing the Kinect. <laughs> <laughs> so you could see him doing the helicopter and stuff, and I just went, oh, no. Uh, yeah, not a good, not no, a good mental not a, image. Not a good look. Well, not the only a good time look. I've ever played a Kinect has been at parties. 
And yeah. usually parties when there's like like family parties when there's older people there, and it seems pretty, it's fun in that situation. Like I would never. It's buy the only one. time the connects really ever good. It's a good yeah. party, and same but thing. Same good, but the same goes for the Wii. The Wii's really yeah. only good in party situations as well. But it's and way the Wii U. Than, like, you can't like get a bunch of like thirty to fifty year olds and say here. Hold this controller and then you have a controller. It's just like someone yeah. stand up in front of the TV and wave your arm. Okay, like, no, my, my, my auntie phone. has uh, full frontal lobe dementia. She's currently living at a full time care facility, um, and even and, and back when she was in the early stages of her dementia in the f- care facility, they had a Wii in there. And I kid you not, you've got like 80, 90 year old uh, men and women using the Wii, playing Wii bowling. Uh, is was their Wii favorite bowling, game, yes. right? And and the thing is, is what made it really good was is a uh, the Wii has been shown to help fight dementia. It helps offset dementia. Gaming in general, has uh, gaming in general does it, but the Wii in particular because it's more active and more involved, and and thereby I would assume if they did a similar study, they'd find the same results with the Kinect, right? But not only does it offput dementia, but it is something that older people can do without much sort of mental input in terms of which button to press it's sort of like i need to there's not that barrier to entry like yeah you look at um kids or people under the age of 30 have massively higher motor skills with their hands and especially the younger thank you for that chris okay (laughs) not not under 30 anymore you're not (laughs) no no way (laughs) i thought you were like 25 people no 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 no, 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 no. uh that being said uh Damien would have the same level of motor skills as you do, though, because the average gamer is 37. Yeah, no, but what yeah. I'm saying is um, so, kids that grow up, like a kid nowadays has, has a, a touchscreen phone within, like, being 10 years yeah. old sometimes. So, and because of that, and then all through their teenage years when, they, when you really learn most stuff, they have, like, ridiculously better fine motor skills with their hands. I don't know where I was going with this, but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, no, old people, as well. yeah, like, they don't have that, like... Um, ingrained sort of like yeah. being used to using like keyboards and stuff like that so that um, so controller... we're just going to have a generation of people who have arthritis by like 40 we yeah, already have a generation of people who have arthritis by 40 it's yeah. right now <laughs> we have that problem um, oh, no <laughs> no I just remember the scene from the Simps- Simpsons where he's playing on the arcade machine all day because the school's closed uh, it was Kearney and he, yeah, and, and he says my doctor says I have the wrists of an 80 year old <laughs> yeah Let's talk about these games. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there any, like... Watch Dogs. It's all I want to talk about. It's all I want to play. Um, you saw it at E3, though. I know, and I'm still stoked about it. I, I've been avoiding watching gameplay, but when I saw it at that conference, I was fucking Now, Watch Dogs, about. now, that's quite an interesting game, because it, what, what they've really seemed to have done is made uh, nine, uh, George Orwell's 1984, the video game. Yeah, Is what much. it looks like to me, yeah. Um, except they've updated it, because obviously in 1984 they didn't have mobile phones and things like that, so <laughs> what they had was... If you wrote a, it now, like... Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you, if you yeah, d- decided to modernise 1984, we this should is wake what you get. We up for a cryogenic uh, tube. And, uh, <laughs> so but it'll, what, it'll be George, or- George Orwell's 2024. Yeah, yeah. George Orwell's 2024. <laughs> but what, what worries me, though, about it, though, is that it, it is, it's made by Ubisoft... Right, but I'm not sure which. It's published, by but it, it's uh, is it published? I thought it was made by one of their studios. I don't is know. Is it Ubisoft? Um, is it Ubisoft Montreal that's working on it, or is it, it Ubisoft? It might even be actually, yeah. If um, it is, okay. Well, hopefully it is more Ubisoft Montreal, just because my one big problem with sort of when they take an idea and then try and screw with it is that, like, especially with American, I'm talking American films at most, but it applies to video games where they go, oh, here's this fantastic idea which had a lot of subtones for the culture it was written for and then they try to americanize it and that's a real real issue for me what so what culture was it written for then? well uh, 1984 is set in london uh, it's, watch dogs though watch dogs is set in america isn't it yeah I, I and that's what i'm saying so. what they're doing is they're trying to take 1984 which is set in london and move that to america and give it american cultural subtones and uh i don't nuances. know if they're like purposely going out and trying to make 1984 the video have they said that uh, well, no, they haven't. But uh, if you look at everything that that appears, it is it's it's a mix between 1984 and the TV show Person of Interest, and Person of Interest was 1984, the TV show. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, I mean, so that that's what worries me though is is that even though it looks good, the gameplay looks really good, I'm worried that the story is going to be completely shit, right? And for a place, usually for a play, I'm pretty hardcore about story driven games anyway, but. For a PlayStation title, generally PlayStation titles are very story-driven in the first place, so I tend to hold them to a higher standard than Xbox titles, which are more like, blow shit you up. Mean, you mean the exclusives? Yeah, the exclusives. Yeah. Um, now, Watch Dogs isn't an exclusive. It's, no, it's, it's coming um, out on the Xbox 
720 or whatever the hell they want to call it. Let's just st- say that. Let's, let's just call saying. it the... Se- okay, for the, yeah, for the sake of figuring out what the fuck we're going to call it, let's call it the Xbox 720. The new Xbox. Um, I Xbox So even, even though it's not... Ex- <laughs> even though it's not exclusive, they've effectively almost made it exclusive because now people are going to associate it with the PlayStation 4 because they really did announce it at well, that, like, that event. I think that they made a point, point not to do that because in E3 it was in the Ubisoft press conference. Yeah. It wasn't in either of the two co- yeah. press conferences. But now it's it's pretty much indelibly linked with yeah. PlayStation yeah, well, 4. Everyone so would have forgot it between like, so, so, June so last year and for, now. For, so. for argument's yeah. sake, it's going to be a PlayStation 4 title, which means I will hold it to the story standard. If it's got a shit story, I'm not going to play it. I don't know about that, man. Like, I think by the time the game comes out, we will have heard a lot about Xbox, the new Xbox. Yeah. We will have heard a lot about that. We've seen another E3 would have passed. I think I don't think it would like currently yeah because the PlayStation's been the first one to go out there and like you know make a name for it with this new, new generation but I don't think that it will be like a, a PlayStation title yep. by then. Now speaking of uh, mindlessly blowing shit up though, another game coming out for the PS4, Killzone Shadowfall. Yeah. Is anyone excited about this? I, this I, is I kind about, of am. I I this is about am. where I just like sit back and just listen to you guys because. <laughs> Most it's, of the place, like Killzone, Resistance, don't give a shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, see, Killzone. I played Killzone one when I was a kid, and I was bloody Killzone loved it. Yesterday, I love. I want to get it again. I want to play it again. So if you've got it, I want it. It's shit. Like, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it, it did have a lot of shitty aspects to it. it. I agree. Hold up, is what I'm saying. Like, I agree. Like there was only one character worth playing, and that's the first character. There's only gun, wor- only one gun worth having, and that's the enemy's gun, which means you got to kill someone to get it. But I mean, like mechanically, you go back and after playing a game like Call of Duty or like. Even Halo we played today. Like, yeah. Just some of the stuff that has now become like staples in FPS genres just wasn't done back then. Yeah. And it just, it, it doesn't. But hold that up. doesn't stop me from going back and playing Goldeneye. You know yeah, what I mean? They, it doesn't stop they, me from. Although it kind of does. Have you guys played Goldeneye in the last five years? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty it bad. It's not fun. It's Never not had good. Like, everyone remembers it as like it's an amazing thing. And it was, but you go back and you play it, it really just. Doesn't... Busted 2 would take that, you know, like groin high guy when you're doing a slap. Oh, job. Oh, job. oh, holy <laughs> shit. Oh, job. <laughs> Fucking yeah, and job. And you could just not slap that bastard down. Throw his hat around. <laughs> yeah, what the fucker. Nah, I used to play as Jaws. Like, whenever someone would go, oh, job, I'd go, right, Jaws, because he's the tallest character, which means I could, like, see over, like, certain bits of cover and things like that. And she'd be like, yep, <laughs> got you. So instead of going through and just, like, talking about each, because I, I really don't think there is that much to talk about. There's not really. Yeah. Uh, this, so we'll just skip through. Um, Drive Club, uh, Infamous, Second Son. Yeah. I don't know, that's, like, it was just, a, obviously, just a CG trailer. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, credit to Sony as well. They actually showed gameplay for all these games, except for Infamous. That's true. And I think Drive Club's really trying to, like, cash in on the social aspect the, the of... The lack of a GTA that's coming out. <laughs> a G, a G, um, uh, uh, GT Grand Turismo. Grand Turismo, yeah. That, that'll but, be no, the bad blood but, that came from GT5. Yeah, yeah. well, there's that. Well, the two, there's GT5 Prologue, which is yeah. giant, which was a 6 <laughs> gigabyte <laughs> demo. Pain, and pain for GT5. a demo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, but what, what I'm talking about Drive Club is, yeah, I think they really are trying to cash in on the social aspect of the PlayStation 4. Like, their, their big push when they gave the talk for that uh, Evolution Studios, when they gave their talk, it was all about... It wasn't actually about driving cars. They said, oh, yeah, we've got these awesome cars, but it's all about your friends and you're going to have a club, right? Uh, sorry, it was a British guy. So I was like, oh, you're going to have your club. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your club That's and you're going to play with your yeah. friends. <laughs> you oh, know. No, no <laughs> surprise know. there. Yeah. It'll, be, like, it'll be a launch game, so no doubt that it will try to just, like use all the features that the PlayStation 4 has really badly but yeah. like <laughs> speaking but, yeah. of that like the, I love the idea that you can watch your friends playing and I love a lot of the simple stuff like turning yeah. it on and instantly coming back to where you were playing but can you guys really see yourself watching much like if, say if I share the last five minutes and I've just got like a kill killionaire or some good thing in card or whatever like you'd watch I that. will not watch you do that uh, I'd, I'd, whatever I don't, for thir- <laughs> if, if it was a, if it was a 30 really second thing and you said check out this cool explosion yeah. I'd watch it 30 seconds yeah. but if it was a five minute long thing after 30 seconds I'd switch yeah, on like, yeah, nah, I, I, I can't really or I'd skip to it people use that, that much. Um, see I I usually spend like an hour a day watching other people play games yeah but no but you watch edited videos with commentary and no they're not edited well they have commentary but they're not edited yeah but, yeah, but you can't put commentary on a video from a PS4 yeah well unless yeah, record your mic I'll, I'll stick to YouTube for watching gameplay yeah. stuff unless yeah. see the thing is though is, is that because you can broadcast it live it makes uh, it brings good. shoutcasting then to the console so uh, they've got to incorporate the voice chat straight onto that I don't know stuff, if you can do it when you're uploading but when you're streaming it live I know you can broadcast out so if you're playing a game like Drive Club, what you can have is another is another person who is just spectating 
and they can be like the race announcer for you know yeah. when you're watching the Grand Prix. Red Watch that quarter up, man. Gotta... <laughs> Red While we're on the topic of uh, voice communication, one thing Sony has to do is bundle in some kind of microphone and yes. headset thing instead of making you pay fifty, a hundred dollars yeah. for something. Yeah, a little yeah, shitty aside from headset. the console itself, or at least yeah. have like a standard jack on less, like well, on like the. Yo, they have. They've got a headphone jack right in the um, right in the control. It's great. I, th- I think you put a mic, a mic, uh, an auxiliary three point five, whatever it's called. Um, so that that's good. Yeah, they, they have to bundle like something in. The that's why the Xbox was um, so successful in bringing this whole like gaming community thing, like making it popular. Yeah, because they bundle that stuff in next and they like push it onto you basically. And now everyone does it. It's the main thing. Now. Well, they, they, they kind of did the same thing, though, because you've got PlayStation service, which is free, but then you have to go out and buy a microphone to communicate with people. Then you've got the Xbox where you get the microphone for you free, don't have but you've got to pay. Yeah. So are you <laughs> saying <laughs> microphone equals one year of um, online subscription? Essentially, yes, but paying for something intangible like the service is much less of a... a like I guess a perceived hit than spending money on a piece of hardware. That's what it's about. It's all about the perception of how what you think you're giving to it, even though at the end yeah. Because if the you same. look at the prices, uh, I mean, they, a year of live and a Bluetooth microphone for your PlayStation would be roughly equal in price. I yeah, would say. they are. Unless you go really cheap in the Bluetooth earphone thing, and then it probably sounds like you know you've got Daleks in your ear or something. <laughs> <laughs> and on the topic of what they need to do, they need to come to like parity with what Xbox has done. Like cross game chat, things like that. Need yeah, to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're doing that. No, they've got it? that in it. They've it's got. Not PS3. It's on the PS4 though. They've got cross game chat. Yeah, no, but they need to. Include, that's the kind of stuff they need to. Yeah. So how about we just like go straight onto Destiny? Um, yes, so we were talking about this on the last point. We talked about Destiny itself after watching the V-Doc. Do we know much more? Like uh, Aside aside from it answering a few questions from the V-Doc, because when you're watching the V-Doc, you watch it and you see them doing shit on their mobile phones and stuff, and obviously they're trying to incorporate some sort of mobile phone social aspect, but but that seems to make a hell of a lot more sense that they're releasing it for the PS4. Right, and and they're probably going to do it for the Xbox as well. It's not going to be exclusive. I I, I seriously can't see Bungie going from one to the other mm-hmm. unless <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> seriously yeah. fucked them in some I'm way. I'm pretty sure yeah. they've announced it for other next gen consoles. Yeah, they have. Yeah. Um, but it does it does answer a lot of questions regarding that because because when I saw the mobile phone thing, I went, you know, I I, I didn't really know how they were going to pull that off with the PlayStation Three or the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. But now they're doing a the conference because I I missed the conference, the Destiny part of it, and I, I oh, saw I, the big dog. I, I watched thought. no, I watched the Destiny part of the conference. So they didn't introduce anything new. They just said we're coming out on the PS4, um, and we're going to have you know all this awesome stuff, and it's going to be. They said it's going to be a persistent world. Yeah, did they explain right? that anymore? Because like when they were some of the stuff they were hinting at sounded yeah, great. More, but... it's gonna. It, it's it's like I, I guessed when I when I guessed it. I thought it would either be in, in when they said over the next ten years. I thought there were two ways they could have gone down. The two ways I guess they could have gone down is either A, do it like Halo and go Halo 3. No, I don't think that's what they right? meant. But instead of doing it in really long cycles, you do them in shorter cycles like Assassin's Creed. You do them in two-year sort of cycles, right? Um, and so instead of that, I saw uh, they, they did it the other way, which is like World of Warcraft where they're going to release sort of expansion packs. And it's going to be a persistent world. It's going to be persistent characters. Um, and... <laughs> yeah, it's 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 great. <laughs> Sorry, I love it. Then, then just background <laughs> stuff. I'm trying. Right I'm trying. I'm trying, I'm trying yeah. to concentrate on what's being said, guys. Can you not fucking pass well, notes? notes? What is this high high school? Gonna you know, fucking pass notes? Jesus. Uh, ah, that's um, funny. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm well stoked for Destiny. Like, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of um I don't know bad, but people aren't excited about Destiny at the moment. A lot of people are kind of pissy about it. I'm I'm mean, I'm I'm not excited as much as I'm curious because. Bungie, yeah, Bungie are big on making first-person shooters, so I know it's going to be a good first-person shooter. I have no doubt in my mind that the combat mechanics will be fantastic. But what I am curious about is that, Leonard, whenever they've made first-person shooters, Halo and uh, their previous games in the series, it's always been linear and level-based. They've never really done anything open-world, and that's what they're doing with Destiny. It's going to be open-world, it's going to be persistent, I, I, um, it's going to be an MMO. I'm excited to be sold an MMO world. Like, honestly, I've never yeah. ever played one and, and liked it for more than five minutes. I'm kind of thinking yeah, like I'm they the do a kind of mix between um, Planet Side and, you know, World of Warcraft. That's what I'm thinking they're going to do. I think they're going to get Planet Side 2 and they're going to get World of Warcraft and they're going to mash them together they pull and that see off. what I'm breaks. Stoked it does sound pretty cool. Hells though. yeah, I'm like... stoked. I really liked, honest to God, for the artwork, I really liked how sort of, how much they've sort of gotten in influence from Isaac Asimov. 
because you look at you look at the big sphere in the sky and things like that and then you pick up any isaac asimov novel that was published in the 80s and you look at the covers and they look almost exactly the same i've never been and i really like that for a halo game before <laughs> 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 let's not fool ourselves it's it's it really is going to be halo the I mmr don't, I really don't probably think so. i think oh. it's going to be very different in tone and like the, 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 some of the design will be similar like it'll be space guys shooting each other with yeah. laser Bun- Bungie does sci-fi shooters really well but other yeah. stuff not so much so. yeah well that's what we talked about last week as well yeah. so yeah. moving on to the most like what the fuck moment of, of the whole conference ah um, yes Diablo 3 coming to the PS4 uh, yeah well, that, and the Playstation 3 they've said while. both they're going to do it for the Playstation 3 as well really yeah. yep yep mm. they've said the, the the guy who I can't remember the name of the guy, but the guy from Blizzard Entertainment, he came up on stage and he said, "Hello, you know, you know," because they, they did this huge fucking build up before he came up on stage. They said they had uh, the host for the the whole thing said, "Now we're going to bring up next a uh, company that doesn't really do much with the um, <laughs> with the um, <laughs> consoles, right? They're big about the PCs. Here is uh, whatever his name was from Blizzard, and everyone just went, "Holy fuck, Blizzard!" And I, honest to God, thought before he announced Diablo three, I had I, I made two guesses. I said, either a they're going to port World of Warcraft, right? They, they they pulled off a whole bunch of crazy shit before why not? that point. They have so much money. I went, why fuck not? it, World <laughs> of Warcraft, why so not? Fast. Right? <laughs> uh, and and a they'd be the first one ever to do it to port an MMO to a console, all right? And with the way the internet's working out, you could do it. They're trying to get a jump on Bungie. Yeah, they're trying to get a jump on Bungie. I said either a that oh, or b Starcraft. Could be subscription based. Pardon? Imagine that. Destiny was like a subscription service. Oh, Pay don't don't fucking jinx yeah. it. It's a possibility. Don't you fucking. I paid pay five bucks a month it. for a persistent world that was that good. Yeah, five bucks a month, but do you pay 30 bucks a month? Because no. that's what World of Warcraft is. And then you vote. Do that's a that's the going B, rate. With your wallet. You know, that's what I'm say, saying, but, that's, but the, that. the going rate for an MMO is, you know, yeah, for, for premium quality, which is what. Bungie will want to produce is thirty bucks a month because that's what Blizzard charges. World of Warcraft last time I checked was uh, fourteen ninety five US. Is it? Oh, oh it's yeah. gone down. See, see, it was down back in Vanilla WoW when I played. It that's was what fifteen dollars. Yeah, I thought month. it was fifteen. Oh, there you well. go. Yeah, um, but I mean, Diablo three to leave that announcement till almost the very end of the conference was kind of like yeah. the most underwhelming thing ever. It should have been part of the build up to the PlayStation Four, but it is. You know? But, it, but the, the announcement of Diablo Three is very underwhelming anyway, because they're not making a new game for the console. No, they're just going to make it one. work on the old console yeah. and the new one. Um, the, the interesting thing is not that Diablo Three is um, coming to a console; it's that Blizzard is working with console makers. Yeah. Now that's that is, that essentially is what we're getting is a personal computer in our house. Yeah, with yeah. a controller attachment instead of a keyboard. So. But what, what well, does yeah, Blizzard yeah. is open in their mind to developing for a console yeah. platform, and that's and, good for the and, and what that means is, even though yeah, even though it is only just a port, it's like who the fuck cares about a port? What it does show is is that Blizzard is you know dipping their toe into the water when it comes to consoles. And if Diablo three sells well, which is what they're going to look at, they're not going to look at how hard it was. It's not going to sell well though. Anyone won't. who wants to have played yeah. Diablo three will have already played it. And, and that's, and that's, and that's the big worry okay, because if it doesn't sell, the controller like. How quickly are you going to click on that monster? Then that other monster on the other side of the screen. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm sure it would be like you controlling the character directly. I don't, I don't even know. Like, I'm, I'm going to take a stand here and say it's going to be a bad port. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard's no, going to look at the sales bad. and they're not going to want to dip their toe back into that's, the console that's what market. I'm, that's I reckon what I'm it'll thinking. be a good port, but it still won't sell well. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a good port, but they won't sell well, which means that any any ideas they had for a console-based game will not happen. They'll yeah. just get stuck in a drawer and left to well, die. They're not idiots. They, they know that, like, like you, got, like we said, like. Anyone who really, really was stoked about Diablo yeah, three would have already played. But it. But what they got to look at is is what the share the shareholders uh, aren't game developers, but and they're they going to say so it didn't sell money. well. Why the fuck are we going to bother with but a console? They might, it could be more of a question of like whether or not it's viable to make it on a console, like design yeah. wise. Like obviously the, the sales are hugely going to influence that, but it, it could be a, um, a developer kind of thing. Yeah, but that's what I mean Hopefully. by the stockholders. <laughs> the stockholders aren't going to care about how hard it is to develop. They're going to look at the bottom line, and the bottom line's not going to be very big. And so they're not going to see the viability of working to do it. That's true, but it, it, then it becomes a, a you know cost versus profit. And if their profit isn't that marginally higher than the cost, it's not viable. Yeah, and that's what well, I think is going to happen. I think they will turn a profit, but it won't be a big profit. No, and it's not not going to show them that it's worth developing. Beyond exactly, that. would have been better for them to develop something new. Or, yeah. you know, for people my age, so that that's a we massive were, gamble, there were a few people that were really excited about maybe they were going to resurrect this old StarCraft ghost idea that they had way back when that was kind of like, um, 
you know, the Duke Nukem Forever thing of that time as well. Before it was cool. Um, but they actually out and out cancelled that, you know. It wasn't like this continual thing where the, de- the release date was delayed for like 12 years. Half-Life 3. Yeah. <laughs> you know that would make, like yes. make like a first-person shooter Starcraft game for like the PS4 and you'd be like, oh, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it would have been better for Blizzard to announce something like that rather than just saying, here's this game that everyone's already played. Remember that game you don't like very much? Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's the thing as well. Diablo three didn't do that well. No, it didn't. Yeah, because it was very it was very buggy at the start as well. Yeah, like, and just people the that? servers were constantly crashing. What was it? Era thirty seven. Era thirty seven. Yeah, I know. I made, I made three as well. <laughs> I made I made a whole little HTML game based around it. Where I got I I, lo- I got a screenshot of the login screen that you could log into, and whenever you press login, it would instantly give you error thirty seven, <laughs> and then you press OK, and it would take you back, and that's all it would be. Yeah. I shit you not. I uploaded the the link to my Facebook page. I had a buddy comment like twenty minutes later saying that was the worst ten minutes of my life. <laughs> uh, I went. You do realize it was a joke. I wasn't Diablo giving you three Diablo. the experience. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I said no. I said it, I said it's called the game's called Diablo three for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough, enough about PlayStation. No more free advertising for them. Um, so the, the next news, well, the last news thing I wanted to talk about was um, Cliff Blazinski. Cliff Blazinski. You say his name say. wrong, you can't interview him. Uh, I learned right. that one the hard way. No, my boss did at the time. Um, <laughs> he he basically came out and um. Defended. I, I'm not sure if it's defending EA or, but like it's neither. It's just he's made a. I think pretty yeah. I think he comment. was. I think he was defending the gaming industry in general, really. Yeah, and basically saying that it's it is a capitalist environment. Games developers are here to make profit, not to make stuff that you know makes us 100 percent happy. Yeah. Obviously, you know the two do correlate. If you're 100 percent happy with the game, then you're obviously going to buy it. Um, but I think what he was coming out and saying is that. If you really didn't like something, don't buy it. Vote with don't your buy it and then bitch about it. It's important. You know? <laughs> I don't get why he made the um the I, I don't get why he compared Valve and EA. Well, then. that's just that's a that's another big thing that you talked about as well. I got the quote here somewhere. Because I, I was talking about with you guys on Facebook before, um, and I've, I've realised not all of it's completely true. But um, yeah, here you go. It's um, I'm going to come right out and say I'm tired of EA being seen as the bad guy. I think it's bullshit that EA has the scumbag EA memes on Reddit and the good guy Valve can do no wrong basically saying that end quote I'm um, basically saying that Valve have had the same model for a long time people a big fucking criticism with Diablo 3 was that you always had to be online yep Valve Steam is the same thing oh exactly and, but because they've made a couple of good games and they've made some fantastic games like everyone gives them a free pass yeah and I'm not saying I hate on Valve but it's it's very poignant that he said that and a lot of other people have been, other people have been saying the same thing as well it's the, the microtransactions thing too which Valve also does yeah um, yep. it's cosmetic stuff for Valve though but all the them f- hats yeah the th- there's a it's, a it's a new thing like microtransactions it's, it's, it's not really though it's, it's, it's been out for quite some time yeah it's not been mastered though like people are still trying to figure out how to correctly incorporate into a game still make money on it but not break the mechanics of the game at the same time yeah uh, this pay to win stuff is a, a bad direction yeah, to go no, it think. really that's is how, no, pay, so yeah there are different there are ways of running the freemium model and pay to win is a completely terrible way to do it that being said it does work people will still do it um, especially, I, I read an article about it. Um, especially in in China, the Chinese market love pay to win games. Uh, there was a guy in China, and he was playing an MMO, and it was one. It was a legitimate MMO. We had to work hard to get all the legendary items. And he went, nah, screw that. I'm a millionaire. I just want to buy the items. So he went and started his own game development company and built his own MMO, which was completely cash based. Right, you could work your way up, but it took a ridiculous amount of time. And if you put in yeah, 500 bucks, you could get every item and be super awesome. See, so that undermines... Which, which, like, if that's the whole reason the game yeah. is being made, whatever. But like, if it undermines the economy of a game, then it just, that's when it goes wrong yeah. for me. I don't yeah. understand the point either. Like, One of my favourite things is when um, a games developer actually includes like a progressive equipment model into it. So yeah. you know, you've got something to look forward to when you go up that next level. If you just buy all that stuff and have everything from the word go, what is the point? You know, I mean, sure, you can play against other people, but by that stage, you so completely overpower them that it's not really a game anymore. You push a button, people die. Done. Aesthetic yeah. stuff is a perfect example of a good way that you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Like a, a new skin for your character, a new HUD for the, or whatever. Like it's, it's great. Like, and it, a free game like that, it should make you want to do that. And I've been in situations where it's like, I've played this game, it was free. I want to give you some money because you've made a good experience and I've enjoyed myself. Yeah. Like. And that that's a brilliant way, but you can't bank on people doing that. 
I th- in most cases. <laughs> I think the pro, like, I, I'm not going to be one of those people who say, "Oh, EA was the worst, is the worst company in history," or blah blah blah. But <laughs> they like, have done some bad <laughs> things recently. With the, the <laughs> yeah, but and it, yeah, I, I, I just, I, the reason I don't like them so much is that they're forcing people to put these um, systems into place, which generally like wouldn't have yeah, it. Like no, Dead like, Space, um, no other game from EA will um, come without microtransactions from now on. Yeah, I think that's fucking stupid. Like you can't it, in some games, it just does not work. Yeah. Like you do, you, and they're forcing the developers to put that in their games. Like Dead Space again is a perfect example of it. Real yeah. Racing, that yeah. yeah, Real Racing has a lot of mi- microtransactions in it. But the thing is, is that um, uh, Cliff Blazinski goes on and talks about that, and I have a quote here. He says, "I remember when Rage was pointed at Epic, he, the company he worked for at the time, when we allowed users to purchase weapon skins in Gears of War three. I replied to an enraged fan on Twitter that." you're more than welcome to not buy the optional cosmetic weapon skins that will make you more visible to the enemy. Exactly. And you know what? In spite of the uproar, people still, people still bought plenty of them. That's the opposite. Optional like, cosmetic. Optional yeah. cosmetic item. That's now, it's completely and, different to what EA is doing. Though. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing, so EA yeah. do do yeah. that as well, though. Um, do, like they yeah. like yeah. I was talking about with respraying cars in Real Racing 3. It's an optional cosmetic item. Right, and you don't have to respray your car. I just did because I couldn't stand the. Do the red green. ones go faster? No, they do. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> of course uh, they do. You know, that. yeah. <laughs> That's just physics. Yeah, <laughs> you can't you, you can't blame EA for physics. I mean, we may as well blame Valve for gravity. But he, he it. also uh, Cliff goes into pointing out that people get down on Origin a lot as well, and yeah. he also points out that we all forget that it wasn't that long ago that Steam was a terrible terrible service that did not work well but I, and I, not for I me hate <laughs> and, and it was actually met when 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 uh i have the quote here when gabe pitched it at gdc to my former co-workers years ago they came back with eye rolls um you know even when steam was lo- was announced game developers didn't see the potential that they just went a digital distribution service but where's yeah, the, but that's the same with anything yeah. that's yeah. groundbreaking and, and different like, yeah well, people look and great, that's the thing though but origin are like, trying to do the same thing they're trying to create their own version of that no, the, the and it's going to take origin, them some time to make it better well, the reason I, I dislike origin is because it's it's forced on you in the same way that steam is forced on you but the only reason they don't let their own games go through steam is because they want their their slice of this pie it just yeah. pisses me off and, and like Fair play, you can have your own service and make it good so people want to have it, but also make your games available through Steam. Don't force people's hand to get this piece yeah, of software. Yeah, that's want. true. Like, or other places. Sorry? Or other places, not just through Steam. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, even yeah. purchase it through platform. Steam. That's it. That's what, that was the good thing about it. Nobody knows that Ubisoft has their own digital distribution service, it's, Uplay. It's even worse than Origin. It, well, is, it is even worse. <laughs> but, man, I've been, I've been collecting Uplay points since... Um, <laughs> What is it? Splinter Cell Conviction. Yeah, but what people don't realize is is that it doesn't force you to use it to buy their games. Like I bought Splinter yeah. Cell Conviction through Steam, and then the only time I ever have any notice of you play is when a little thing pops up on my screen and says you've got an achievement, and we're going to give you some points. But when you've got for to log in through three different services to just play a game that you've bought, especially when you've just bought the disc, yeah, you have to put it in. You've got to log into Steam, you've got to log into you play, and you've got to log into the actual game server as well. It's just fucking ridiculous. I have but that problem. You, like you Batman play so. You play have done some good stuff. You said you play points. Um, They've done a pretty good system. Like getting achievements in the game earns you points, which you can then use to buy all these um, freemium items. Yeah, yeah, like which is it's a good system. That's me, that makes me want to use it. It just pisses me off that I got to log in. One of, one of the issues you got to think about too is that if you have all of these systems, you know, like you say, you want to, you want your game to be available on Steam, then you are in part giving control of your intellectual property to another company. Yeah, you know. They, they. I mean, if you look at uh, War Z, for instance, and the complete debacle that that was, we'll, we'll leave that part alone. But Steam yanked the sale for that because they felt that it wasn't, you know, good enough quality to be on their their thing. Um, also, the fact that the developers outright lied in the <laughs> in the description yeah. for the game, but Steam just kind of pressed a button and gone, huh. um, not available anymore on Steam. So that's their rights, their platform. It is. But that's the point I'm making. You, you say that you want EA games to be available through Steam. Uh, EA then has to accept the fact that Steam can have some control yeah, over the... There's business. a lot of legal bullshit yeah, there. Like, exactly. And they did come up with... I'm not, I'm not talking... I don't know shit about the business world, but like, surely there's some kind of... like. You could say, we have assurances. We have made a fucking game that costs us $100 million to make. We, it's going to be all right. People are going to buy it. Like, And we are, we want a, a special percentage of the sales. We don't want to give you the full 10% that Steam usually take, want to take. 
do you fight this out or something? Yeah, again, that makes means that both play, both parties need to be willing, though. Yeah, know? no, there's that. Yeah, like, everyone wants to be the only thing you ever used it. It's just never going to But the thing is, though, is, is that even though that sounds reasonable to us, to, oh, yeah, no, it's to no a business that tries to squeeze <laughs> every penny out of everything, it's never yeah. going to happen. But that brings us so. back to the shareholders thing as well. Yeah, At the end of the it. day, all of these companies are reportable to, you know, people who have no idea how this stuff works. Yeah. You know, uh, so they've they've got to look after. It. If you look at it and say we spent X amount of money on this distribution service, even though we've got our own, the shareholders will be like, "Well, why?" And that's what the main. <laughs> I think that's the main theme of this blog post that Cliff Pozinski put up. It's like we said at the start. It's a like, business. They're yep. making money, and it's you don't this, like it, don't spend your yeah, money. <laughs> and it's this entitlement that gamers seem to have that they deserve to play everything that's out there, and they they the game is made for them, and it's their right to say what's in it and what isn't. Like Mass Effect 3, for instance. Yeah, like oh, Mass Effect 3. Yeah, we talked about that for like <laughs> that, yeah, we, yeah, we talked about that. But yeah, we, we've covered that to death. But oh, like, yeah. uh, it's just that entitlement that gamers have that I don't think people have the right to do it. Like people that will well, just you can't really tell. You can't tell customers, like, shut up and like buy no, it or no, else just go away. We don't want no, you. No, but you don't have to buy it, though. Yeah, well, that's the point. You know, like Modern Warfare 2 is a good example. No dedicated servers. All these groups on Steam saying, all right, we're not going to buy it. Day one, you look at those groups, 90% of them are listed as being in Modern Warfare 2. There is no point in saying mm-hmm. we're not going to buy it if you're then going to turn around and not buy it. That phrase oh, sorry, again. buy it, I should say. Vote with your wallet. Yeah, yep, exactly. If you don't, if you don't buy the game, then the company's going to look at it and go, well, what was it about this game that made people not buy it? And if you look at it and go, well, there's a lot of people talking That's about the That's nearly where the, the shareholders are going to add to it if you yeah. take the money away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, and people, what people don't understand is, is that microtransactions aren't a new thing in games. I mean, for God's sake, uh, you know, looking at arcade machines, right? Arcade <laughs> machines with the original microtransactions. You were spending two dollars, which isn't an awful lot of money. It's significantly cheaper than buying a video game. Two dollars right? for like you're spending, an arcade machine. Spending, no, 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 no. What I mean is, you're spending two dollars to play the game. And they're, right? they're intentionally made to be difficult, exactly. so that you feed masses of amounts of money. Yeah, in there. and it's only until recently that they've actually made them easier because arcades are now not as popular because everybody's got consoles. Yep. Right, so they've actually intentionally now turned that down so that you will spend money and you will finish the games because otherwise they're going to earn no money out of you and they'd rather get a, a, a small amount of money out of you than no money out of you. And that's but then the thing. It's just the same question again. It's like, where is the line? When is it reasonable to continue? Because I'm not, like, again, another thing that he's said in this is that microtransactions aren't, shouldn't be a dirty word. There's no reason that they're a bad thing necessarily, intrinsically. Where is the line when they become, like... Wh- Accepted? Where, yeah, yeah, like... It's totally fine for cosmetic stuff, and you've got to say that on some level it's going to be you, people would accept having it as a part of the game mechanics as well. But where is that line? It's so blurry, and people have really got to like. Well, we don't know because the game hasn't been made. Like, exactly, yeah, people yet, have really so. got to feel it out, and like, like this generation will be obviously be a big fucking. For, for me, microtransactions that encompass cosmetic changes or added story or anything like that are fine, provided that the added story is not a day one DLC. Uh, mm. that's, um, that again is that, that's a dirty <laughs> word, like. Um, Added story day one. Yeah, but day that's one. something that they could have included no, on, but not on necessarily. this. What day one, I, I sorry, you go. What, what if it was made between the, the two months or whatever between when they start printing the discs and they because because they, they and you put it out a month on. after the game comes out. Who's gonna who's gonna seriously play that extra DLC at the end of the twenty four hour period? There isn't a, not, a large enough group of people who do that. There are people who do that. I had a friend of mine who. Uh, she got she pre-downloaded Skyrim, and then the second it was available to play, she clocked the whole core game in 24 hours um, and smelled like Cheetos for a week. Um, uh, but but that being that being said, she is a very small minority of gamers That's who not do what I'm that. About, though. Right, I'm day one about, DLC, yeah. nobody's going to be able to take advantage of it for at least three or four days afterwards. So if, if you bring it out a week later, it's actually more viable. There's a lot of different like, reasons yeah. why day one DLC could come out. One of them is the obvious one that everyone hates, which is. They've taken a part of the game. They've pulled it out and said, "If you want that part, you got to pay more." That's terrible. Particularly when they, when you know, all these people who like to look at the source code discover that all of that stuff is actually there. The um, yeah. and the eight kilobyte key. Yeah, the only thing it. that you're downloading is a little tick box that says that's, you can have access. That to That is this the content. definition of price gouging. And Resident Evil Five. Yeah. But <laughs> some things like there could be some genuine developer, like some reasons to do with the development. That, that would not come out first or they could not see it as a core part of the game they could have done it with a separate team or something like that and I I don't think necessarily that is a bad thing I think at the moment day one DLC is though yeah because, it's being done terribly uh, particularly with places like uh, Microsoft I think you get one free update for your game 
and then everything else you have to pay money to have it hosted on oh, Microsoft It's like $30,000. Something like oh, that. Yeah. So why would you waste that on a piece of day one DLC aside from trying to get more money after people have just spent 100 bucks on your game or, you know, if you happen to be American, $60 or whatever it is. Um, $60 but com- coming back to which kinds of microtransactions are not okay, anything that gives you an advantage over another player should yeah, not exist. Yeah, undermines the game's economy yeah. is a good way... D- of, define gives you advantage. Like, say, unlocking a gun earlier... Well, would you count that as um, having an Absolutely, advantage? yes. Yeah. I, th- I think you should have to actually put the time well, what into about, the game to get What that. about Call of Duty, where it's not so much the gun is better later on, it's just yeah. a, a or different Yeah, or Team Fortress 2 or something, where, like, th- it's all random anyway, so you could get this in an hour, you could get this in 400 hours, you still might not have it, so... You see, that'd be all right, you know, if it was just kind of like a lucky dip. Yeah. That would be fine, because <laughs> uh, I kind of like the idea of people wasting thousands of dollars to try and get that one thing that they want. Oh, but it's really different than wasting thousands of hours doing it? Is anyone more noble than the other? Like, like I, 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 lo- I, I get what you're saying about uh, wanting to earn the having the better stuff, but like, if someone's gonna just chuck fifty bucks at this game, break the game for themselves, and to us have a, have a worse experience, then could we let them? Well, see, the thing is, is that even though people do have the right to be stupid, is what you're sort of inferring yeah, to, pretty much. Right? I'm not, what, I'm not gonna say. What that. annoys me though <laughs> is that a lot of these pay-to-win titles. You're right. What, the, what what these people have to realize is even though it makes the game better for them, a multiplayer title is a community title. Oh, yeah, no, no, so it I'm makes the game worse for everyone else. Here. I'll give you an example. An example is there's a free-to-play game which I play called Blacklight Retribution. It's an online first-person shooter. Now, that is a huge pay-to-win title, right? And because of that, you know, you can, you can start off with, uh, you know, you start off with a basic gun and basic armor, but if you want to, for 50 bucks, you can buy the ultimate armor and the ultimate gun, Right, and even and even then, right? If you you can earn those through in-game currency, you can buy them. But in order to, but uh, the cheapest way to do it is you can buy them only for one day if you want to, which is a good idea because then you can try out a new gun before you want to permanently buy it. But the difference between you know even a five-day rental of it or a permanent is ridiculous. Whereas for you know uh, a bit of money, you can buy it permanently, and it's like five bucks. That like so rental you spend, system pisses me off so much. I don't mind the rental system so much. But except for the price gouging involved in it, like a one day trial, I like because I don't want to buy it and then go, oh shit, I actually hate it. Yeah. I like to buy it, try it out for a day, and go, yeah, this is all right. It's not bad. I've only spent you know two hundred bucks in game currency. That's like half a game, whatever. Interesting to note that but, PS4 said that every game that's available on the store will be will have some kind of demo. Try it before you buy it. Service. Yeah, and that's yeah. what Xbox. But Xbox has that already. Yeah. Steam's had not, that. Already. Steam game. has that. I'm pretty sure Xbox. It's a requirement to put a demo up. Not entirely sure, though. No way. Cause I no, it's, it's, no. A, it's a requirement for XBLA titles, but yep. not for f- uh, full retail That's retail. Right, full uh, yeah. yep. uh, um, it's a good idea. It's a good idea, but but m- many many uh, full retail games will probably put out a demo anyway, just because it, it's a cheap way of ad- cheap advertising. I haven't advertising. played a demo like since maybe like 30 years. I started had playing them recently, and it's kind of cool. Like I played Metal Gear Rising and Devil May Cry in the same day. I was like, which one of these? Because they're kind of similar games. Yeah. And from that, I'm like, I'm going to get Devil May Cry at some point. So at the top of the show, I said that we weren't going to run um, as long as we did last, <laughs> uh, last week. But it looks we're like now we're now running longer. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, it's around the same time. So um, I reckon we should wrap it up. So you know, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's settled then. All right. So um, that has been episode one of the Worldwide uh, Podcast. World, World w- WGCast. Yeah, w- right, yeah, the WGCast. <laughs> I, I yeah. like WGCast. It's just easier to say. Let's so, just call it that. Yeah, I'd like to thank Chris, Damien, and John. Thank you. And I'd like to thank myself because... <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And we will see you in the next period that we actually make another one of Probably these. Probably next week. I'd That's say. it. Can we wrap yeah. this up? i got to pee. All it's right. so bad. Catch <laughs> right. gotcha, you guys. Stay tuned. See ya. Guys, 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 stay tuned. See ya. As stated, 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 see ya.